just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. I have, honestly, an announcement that I am super excited. It's one of my most excited announcements ever. I cannot wait to do this. We are doing a country tour the first week of the NRL. This season, myself, the great Gurino, and Timmy and Matty the Waterboy will be coming out through the country, doing a live show in pubs for uh, four different places at the moment. We may add other, add other locations, but at the moment, we're going to Armadale, we're coming to Wagga, we're coming to Cairns, and we're coming to Rockhampton. So that is right. In the first week of the year of Rugby League, round one to four, we will be coming to all four of those places, we may add on more locations. Obviously, you know, how much people want to come, the demand, all that kind of good stuff. But that's right. Armadale, Wagga, Cairns, Rockhampton. That's where we'll be coming. Definitely locked in, good to go. Blokes, first ever country tour. I was thinking like, you know, we could do all the kind of cities or whatever, but I was like, no, let's get the heartland, the heartland of rugby league out in the country. They love their footy, so we thought, stuff it. We'll, you know, the city we can always do down the track or whatever. Let's make the first tour out in the country. So this is powered by Ringers Western, guys. They they get it. They understand it. We The reason why we love partnering up with them was, A, I love what they do. B, they are obviously country. So they're, they're you know, part of that community. Uh, but also, we, we just have very similar, I guess, ethos when it comes to our brands. So it is powered by Ringers Western, guys. So... If, you, if you're really excited for the, the country tour, give Ringers Western a follow on Instagram or Facebook. Check out their clothing, some of the best clothing you can get. Uh, Ringers Western will be the partner of the tour. So it's the Ringers Western bloke tour. Super, super, so massive thank you to Ringers Western. Massive thank you. And I'm really excited for the, because um, we've got some more plans with Ringers Western that we'll announce closer to the dates. But I'm really excited for the partnership going forward. We've got so many things that we can do together. But the Gurino, thoughts on the country tour, mate? Mate, I've got my wedding in eight weeks, and uh, I'm not sure what I'm more excited about. Just uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> mate, how good. Timmy, what about yourself, mate? You pumped or what? I can't wait for this, mate. Yeah, I said, uh, I bleed country. Love it. Love the regional area. So when you, you first sort of mentioned that this might be a thing coming up in the future and to start the season, I got so, so excited about it. Get out there of a weekend, watch some footy with the locals, punch some schooners out, some tin to bloke. Uh, I c cannot wait for it. The only thing I'm sort of a bit nervous about is, obviously, firstly getting new city slickers out there oh. you know, like, am among, amongst the heartland of rugby league. Give me a break. And then just, like, Kempi, when you inevitably fall in love with whether it be Armadale, Wagga, Cairns, <laughs> Rocky, and you're obviously going to have to pack up, move the studio. We're all going to have to move with the <laughs> podcast. So um, just planning for, sort of for the future, a few things to work out now. But, mate, it, it's going to be so much fun. Absolutely. Can't wait. I actually think my... Part of my soul is still in a Rockhampton alleyway <laughs> from when I played Clydesdales. <laughs> Many a night out in the great Rock Vegas. Uh, yeah, so guys, super excited. Uh, we will announce the places that we'll be visiting uh, probably next week. We're just waiting for one to confirm, and then we'll have all four venues ready to go. Uh, but yeah, please, if you are in a, close around the areas of Armadale, Wagga, Cairns or Rocky, Make sure to get down. Uh, as you know, we, we can't come into a... It's very hard to get it all together and do it, so we may not be back for at least another year, um, if, if maybe even a couple of years, because we'll go to other places uh, next year. So the Bloke Country Tour, powered by Ringers Western. Guys, go and support them, because they're supporting us, and they're supporting Rugby League, which is really good. But the Bloke Country Tour, super, super excited. Also, thank you, everyone that was a part of the sale last week. It was absolutely huge. I uh, got so many messages of people just like grateful of how much they could grab for such a discount. Uh, and yeah, it was really, really exciting. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and also you can grab a case of bloke beer, all the good stuff, go to our website, stock us. But let's get into the biggest news that has just dropped yesterday. Latrell Mitchell, uh, Jackie Whiten arrested. Uh, basically what has happened or what seems to have happened now again, we don't have all the information because it's a legal case, but it seems as though they were having a friendly wrestle in a, in a pub or whatever. Police were called out. They were arrested, uh, held till about 10 in the morning, I think, and then let go. Uh, look, it's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, it's silly. It, it, like, it's silly. You're a professional athlete. You're pay the big bucks. You're superstars of the game. Um, it's absolutely silly. It's a mistake. Is it the end of the world? No, it's just... just one of those stupid things that 
seem to happen and we learn from what we move forward, in my opinion. Guru, what are your thoughts, mate? Very rugby league, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's rugby league to its core. I agree with you, mate. Uh, I think there's bigger fish to fry. It's not a great look. There's no denying that whatsoever. Uh, better if it didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, I do think it's been a little bit blown out of proportion. Timmy? Yeah, my heart sunk when I first saw the headline, oh. mate. You sort of, your head just jumps to conclusions. Well, you know, what's happened down there? Sort of started within about four seconds, planned to the future once again. Hopefully Blake Taff and Matty Frawley put in big <laughs> pre-seasons and they, they've been training the house down. And then you sort of read into it a little bit more. And as you said, it, it sounds like... Hopefully, hopefully, it's a little bit of a making uh, mountains out of molehills and there's not too much to it. As I said, there, there'll be a few things still to come out with it all and, you know, you, you can't justify it in the sense that it's such a bad look mm. um, for the players, for the clubs and the, the game itself. But the fact that they're still going ahead to play for the All-Stars Clash this weekend makes me think that, all right, hopefully it's not too, too much to it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those really interesting things where, like, for example, I had a situation in my career where I was arrested and it never made the paper because I'm not a, a big superstar. And like, I got arrested for the stupidest reason ever. Like, I was trying to get into a pub. They were letting all these guys in with like fucking shorts and that. I had a shirt, a nice shirt with a hoodie on, but it was a nice shirt, dressed nicely, and the bouncer was just being a dick, didn't let me in. Changed shirt, put on a shirt without a fucking look, a shirt that was way worse. And then I was like, all right, well, I got the shirt on, I can let in. He's like, nah, didn't let me in. And I'm like, are you serious, Rara? Rah? Anyway, um, Cops came over, like walked over, and like it was no, it wasn't aggressive or anything like that. And they're like, um, they started trying to ask my name, and like then I started wigging out, going, "Oh my god!" Um, and I was like, I was like, "Oh, I'm leaving, I'm leaving," and like literally just like trying to walk away, like literally trying to walk away. And I would have been like thirty or forty meters away from the door, guys. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, uh, and boom, arrested me because I wouldn't give them <laughs> give them my name. Crazy. There was no physical violence. There was no push. There was no aggressive in people's faces. Just got arrested because they wouldn't give because I wouldn't give them their, um, them my name. And so when I look at situations like this, I can't judge Trell and Jackie Whiten because if I was a superstar, that would have been in the paper. Um, now, it's, is it wrestling in public? Obviously not. Um, and even though the cop in my situation was a dick, like a hundred percent dick. I should have just walked away. Like that, that was silly by me. And, and so even though um, it's not a big deal, we still have to acknowledge that Jackie and Trell, regardless of whether they should or shouldn't have been arrested, rah, all that kind of stuff, they were wrestling first. So they made the mistake. Um, it's not the end of the world at all. I think, I think it'll just blow over quite quickly. As you said, the fact that they're playing All-Stars, I think, suggests that, look, Silly mistake, let's move forward. You realise, Kempi, tomorrow's headlines, the paper, front page. <laughs> Bombshell, bombshell ass, <laughs> bloke in a bar, superstar reveals dark past, <laughs> arrest history. Mate, I'm a reformed bad boy. Yeah, Guru's okay. hosting the podcast <laughs> next week. <laughs> um, but it's just an example of like, I did get arrested. Like, and if that, that you know, beat gets arrested in the paper. <laughs> um, and so even though I could sit here and try to say the, the cops were dicks and the security guy was a dick, I still got arrested and I still could have made decisions before that arrest to leave. I could have just, as soon as the security guard was being a dick, I said, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere else, but I didn't. So similar situation with the troll and that, like they're wrestling, they shouldn't have been doing that. Um, any, everything after that, you can talk about, was it too far? Was it this, was it that for sure? But they shouldn't have done the initial thing as well. But yeah. not the end of the world, like it's not a big deal. And unfortunately that's just the reality for these guys. Mm. You know, most people could probably get away with it. They can't realistically, yeah. and, they, and it, it is what it is. Like you know it. So. Yeah, and that they, they, they can't get away with it because of the privilege they have, which yeah. is a lot of fucking cash, and everyone knows that they're famous. You yeah. know, which is that's the, the the price you pay for being paid a lot of money and being famous. Uh, so anyway, hopefully, it just all blows over. A <coughs> little bit of a mistake. The boys will, uh, mate. What's with down in Canberra, mate? You guys are grubs. You bring Latrell down there, my boy Latrell, and he turns, he does the wrestling in public. What's going on down there, mate? You're right, mate. <laughs> the Raiders stamped out this off-field mess years and years ago. We just get one bloody dodgy cop or secco and just trying to tarnish the name of a great rugby league club. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, well, no, I won't derail our season, I'm like the bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> mate, that would never happen up in Brisbane. That is net, stuff like that doesn't happen in Brisbane. Um, Anyway, they released a statement. Um, for legal reasons, we cannot comment on the charges that are before the court at the moment. However, 
We wanted to express remorse for putting ourselves in the position to embarrass our clubs in the NRL over the weekend, which I think we've all, we all agree, like that's the mistake here. Uh, we were there to celebrate Jack's 30th with family and friends while everyone enjoyed a great night. We understand that our wrestle, as harmless as we believed it to be, was a poor decision and may have looked bad. We are sorry for this and we and know that we need to be better when in public. We remain great friends and are looking forward to proudly representing our community at All Star this weekend. Um, I think that sums it up. I, I don't think we'll be talking about this again. So anyway, it happened. We talked about it. Let's move on. Uh, let's talk quickly first about the trials on the weekend. Garino, how much footy did you watch on the weekend? <laughs> I got four games in over the weekend. Holy shit. Which yeah. games? Uh, I caught two SG ball games, and then I caught uh, well, I caught half of the Dolphins game, and uh, the second half of the Dolphins game, and then the Broncos game as well. Mm. So it's just good to have some footy back. It, it, it was, was good. good. Timmy, do you get to watch any footy on the weekend? Bits and pieces, mate. I, mm. I'd love to say I, I watched two SG ball games on the weekend as well, but I'd just be lying to, to the people out there. So uh, <laughs> I did catch a little bit, though, just to get that first proper taste of it, and there was, there was a bit of talent on show as well, so yep. it was bloody exciting. Uh, I got to watch Dave Chappelle on Saturday night. <laughs> so good, bro. Who does he play for? Yeah. He's, he could be anything, that bloke. Seriously. <laughs> could be anything. Got a lot of talent. Uh, man, he was so good. But I ended up... Uh, so the next day on... Obviously, I went up to the Dolphins launch, which was great. Really cool to meet all the boys. Uh, on Sunday, I got to watch the Broncos match. Let's talk about Broncos versus Wyndham. Uh, you know, basically, the... Obviously, Broncos are expected to win because a lot of those players are full-time training, whereas Wyndham, obviously, they've got jobs. But I don't think... I think people need to... I guess, you know, they'd understand. But a lot of these players are Q Cup players, though. So it's not like they're sending out a bunch of first graders, um, even though you would expect Broncos to win because they train full-time. Anyway, watching the game, like, it's only one game. It's only Queensland Cup. But it still is against the Queensland Cup side. They're still... I don't know if they went okay last year, but Wyndham notoriously are quite a strong side in the Q Cup. For me personally, I thought Smoothie was outstanding, absolutely outstanding. And I think that he is going to put a lot of pressure on that nine position. And I think it's only fair that he gets a fair crack next week, at, at the very least a fair crack next week. That's how well I thought he played. Um, some other guys that stood out to me, uh, I thought the 13 is really interesting. I apologize if I, I don't have his name here. The 13, a lot of footwork, loved his energy, decent ball player. Um, it's going to be interesting to see size-wise. Like, I wonder how big he is. 13 from Brisbane? Yes, from Brisbane. Uh, his name is Shalom... Oh, sorry, if I... O Ofu. O Ofu. Sh Shalom Ofu? Yep. Yeah, it's O apostrophe O F O U. Um, so he, he's, an, he's one to watch. Like, I think he's still a few years away, but I really did like his energy. I really liked his footwork um, and all, that, all of the, that good stuff. Uh, who else I'm trying to think of? Tristan Saylor had a couple of tries this, which was good. Um, Ethan Qua Quaidwood? Quai Ward. Quai Ward? Yeah. I really like this young fella. I'm not sure where, where, where he's guru. I think you know a little bit more about him. Yeah, he, he played SG Ball with the Chooks a couple of years ago. Then I, I didn't see him for a couple of years, and he popped up. I watched him a little bit in reserve grade last year. Big body centre. I think he is uh, first grade ready, mate. And the, the, the other centre... I thought he went really well too. Mariner. Yeah, Mariner, absolutely. I'll tell you the one that I really liked, and I'll throw it to Tim in a minute because he's a Canberra boy, Jack O'Hearn, the 5'8". He was great. Bro, how many teams in this competition are lacking halves, Dad? Yeah. And this bloke isn't in a system? It's fucking wild. And and he, what was interesting about him, he was almost playing like a seven, like yeah. in the sense that well, he was dictating where they would go and everything. I'm sure most of the time I've seen him play before, he has been playing seven. Well, know a lot about Jacko, yeah, because he came through the Raiders junior system all the way from, I think, uh, 18s through to, was very prolific through the 20s with the Raids. Uh, spent a lot of time playing New South Wales Cup for the Mounties, it would have been at the time. Um, uh, a lot of fullback mm. in, in his earlier days. He's obviously transitioned more in recent years, and I haven't seen a lot of him in the last couple of seasons since sort of he left the club, but obviously made that transition mm. more to the halves. He'd spent time between sort of 5'8 and fullback, but a lot more of a fullback. So mm. the fact that him running around, you know, doing a lot of organising, it's a, a big transition positionally. So always just a rock-solid footballer, very reliable, mm. um, could never sort of quite crack it up. I'm trying to line up the timelines, but I reckon... He was probably stuck behind a couple there, but in the latter years, Charns Nickel Clockstall, I don't know when he exactly moved away, but Charns, a few other fullbacks earlier in the day. So even Jackie Wyden for a while there when he was at fullback. So, but yeah, he's 
solid as a rock, Jack. Mm. When you said this morning that he hasn't always been a halfback or a five eight, I was shocked. Mm. Yeah. He looks like a natural. He he looked really good, really good. I thought he was um he was really solid. Uh, so I thought really good signs for Broncos as well as um, high completion rate from a lot of the game. Uh, they looked. They looked like they'd played together quite a bit, which, again, a lot of these players won't be playing together. They'll all go to their separate feeder clubs. Um, really uh, really exciting times. Thoughts on the, the Tyson smoothie? Has this made things even harder for a club that's still... Like, last year it was hard enough. Now they've got Tyson smoothie. And I don't know, Timmy, or if anyone knows, I'm not sure what Moser, if he's injured, because I'm surprised Moser didn't get a run out this weekend. But Tyson Smoothie, he's made this even harder for the Broncos. I was about to ask you, do you think it's a, you know, a bad look that he was in this team in the first place? But he's played so well that I don't think he can be ignored. Well, he, now. I think he was captain. I think he captain. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a good sign. Like that they're, because sure. like Moser should absolutely be playing this if he's not injured. Well, I would have expected Moser to be the nine in this game. Yeah. Over Smoothie. How so. interesting will it be if he pops up as a in the game this weekend, which is every chance on the team list, in which case you don't want to jump at conclusions in trials for obvious reasons. Yeah, yes. We have no idea why. They might have said, mate, we want to go out to the captain of them and get some experience leading the boys around the park. Mm. But if Moser does come out and gets named you know, at 9 or 14 or whatever in the trial this week, mm. it'll just complicate it even more. Oh, it? for sure. And, and uh, So Smoothie, didn't Smoothie get in? Did he get injured or is that – am I thinking the wrong – he got injured and then last year we run the 2022 – Player of the year for a kick yeah, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the year before he was injured. I think the year before he was injured. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, he came from because my uh, like I remember when I first saw him at Melbourne, I didn't think he was that crash crash hot to be honest with you. And mm. then watching him play Queensland Cup last year, he was like a new footballer. Yeah, very impressive. And what's it's almost ironic is this same game last year. Guess who came on the field at nine and played really well? Yeah, Billy Five Walters. Eight, Walters, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's going to be – It's I'm really surprised that – and on top of all that, he played like 70 minutes, 60 minutes. Big minutes, yeah. Big minutes. Uh, so mm. I, I want to see how this unfolds, and I would love to know whether Moser is injured or not. Because even, like, even if Moser is like the best nine to ever come out of, you know, Q Cup or 20s or whatever – you still have to play him in this game usually as a like it's it, it'd be crazy not to any young kid that hasn't played first grade yet and is first year in a first grade side you you always play him in these games the first game um in saying that maybe he's impressed so much that they're just like straight in which is a possibility uh but the good thing is is that what we've seen so far, at the very least, at a Q Cup standard, Tyson Smoothie is above that Q Cup standard. What we've seen so far, guys, we understand these are trials, so just put all that rhetoric away. We get it, but we only got the information that we've got. Uh, I've searched Twitter, searched Google. There's nothing on if, if Moses is injured, but like that wouldn't be all that surprising if they just haven't released it, so it's, it's mm. a bit of a mystery. Like, And it may not be like injured in the sense he cannot play rugby league. It may be he had an injury that they just don't want to bring him back too yeah. soon from. Um, like, for, if it was round one, he probably plays. Uh, so, really, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. So, yeah, Shalom. Shalom's interesting for me. I wonder how tall he is because, as I said, great footwork, loved his ball playing, loved his energy, um, and, and he's obviously going to fill out. Could you please get his age up for us, if you can, please? Um, but he, he was impressive. I like I liked what he brought. I'm sure he came from the Dragons last year. Yeah, he did. Enough. He was yeah. born in 2000, so that would make him 22. He's not young. 23. So he's 23 years old. So yeah. he's, okay. Okay, interesting, interesting. Did so he? it might be one of those, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. You need to see him against first graders to see how they'll handle the contact, everything like that. Um, but Ethan, obviously Dean Mariner, everyone, we all know Dean Mariner in a sense of if you're a fucking rugby league diehard, you, you know Dean Mariner. He came in, played really well, made his debut last year for the Broncos. Yep. Super quick, centre. Um, I thought he was really good yesterday, oh, when I watched yesterday. But I, Ethan, this other centre, Quaywood. So, have you got a bit of information on him? He was impressive, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I really liked him last year when he was playing Queensland Cup. And just at the end of the day, the Broncos, they've got so many centres and wingers. It's a very stacked side. So, he didn't get an opportunity last year. I think he was on the extended bench a couple of times last okay. season. Um, and once again, it's probably going to take an injury in this side for him to get in somewhere. But... Uh, yeah, as I said, he, he used to play for the Roosters in the SG ball. He's always just been a, a big, rangy sort of body. Mate, I love it. Yeah, I, I love him too. I, I, I thought he would have made his debut last year. And there's a couple of other guys they picked in front of him that I probably wouldn't have picked in front of him, but they did really well when they mm. came in, I thought. So, yeah. 
yeah, Brisbane, they, they've, they've got some good depth in their outside backs. For sure. It's going to be, and it's going to, I'm not saying like Tony Staggs has pressure on him like right now, rah, rah. I'm not saying <laughs> that at all. But, if if Katoni Stags comes out and has another year where it's up and down, up and down, and, and we all understand he was injured, so you know it, it makes the question it makes the question much harder when you have guys like Dean Mariner, guys like Ethan. Then um, I think there's even some centers that didn't even play in this. Obviously, you've got Herbie on the other side, and it's not that you know Katoni Stags has this unique game breaking ability, but it's like okay, you're paying him X amount to play a certain amount of games and impact a certain amount of games, rah rah. So I'm not saying he's he's under pressure, but what I am saying is is when you're a club and you've got three or four really promising centres, and you, you've got to make some tough calls, um, I, I think Stags needs to have good this year, good year this year. Like if Stags is on like 300k, I, I think that it would be much kind of. But when you're only you reportedly five to six hundred k, it puts more pressure on unless you're impacting games. You. You, they have to ask a question. Yeah, and if something was to happen that Stags missed a few weeks, injured or whatever, and you gave one of these kids an opportunity, like that Kai Ward with his body and playing for his career mm. in the desperate stakes, like yeah. you wouldn't want to give him a shot if you're Tony. And so were you saying that the Roosters initially were... Years ago, you, yeah, like a couple... Like, uh, uh, Matty, can, can you ever look at exactly how old Kai Ward is? Because he was he's played SG Ball a couple of years ago, mm. um, and then I didn't hear about him for a couple of seasons. And were the Roosters flying him down? I believe so, yeah. I mean, if the Roosters are flying you down, you're bloody going all right. And this is, what, a, a few years ago? So we're talking back-to-back Roosters. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, yeah. I'll, I'll, obviously in their SG Ball, but still, like, the, the Roosters pick and choose yeah. the best of the best. For sure, yeah. for sure. Um, 23. 23. Yeah, so, so that would have been five years ago. I was playing at the Chook, so yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. 18s. It's, um, it's like it's almost, when you hear 23, you go, why isn't a kid with this much talent already debuted? But some people are just late bloomers in, in, yep. in the sense of like maybe some stuff off field didn't go right for him for a couple of years. He needed to reset, come back again. We've seen it happen before. I mean, look, again, we talk about him all the time, Cody Walker. Was, was this close to making his debut for the Storm? Did his hammy before the game? And then he missed footy for three or four years, as in missed, didn't make first grade for four, four years later. Just having a look at his profile now, he's actually born in uh, uh, Wagga, where we'll be doing our hey, show. Uh, oh, there it is, eh? Hey? Yeah. Um, so really, really interesting times for the, the Broncos. Like, it does seem outside back-wise, they are, their depth is quite good. Their depth is quite good. Um, I thought Leota on the wing was good, had some good moments. Jack, James Johnson scored a really good try. Uh, but for me, man of the match was definitely Tyson Smoothie. Definitely mm. Tyson. Anyone? Tristan Saylor's the one there that you sort of skimmed past pretty quickly. He mm. excites me. Like, mm. we saw back in 2020, you got those three games for the Dragons, <clears throat> I believe, all off the bench. And he just looked like such a good prospect. He played with that so much youthful confidence. He came on and just, anytime he saw an opportunity, he would mm. take it on. Mm. Loved running the ball. He was quite small at the time. So I haven't really seen him since up until this game. And they said, uh, a few tries, he scored a try of his own, kicked a couple of goals. He's a seriously talented footballer. Yeah. And um, there's that pressure we're talking about on Reese Walsh. Mm. You know, again, and it's like the, it's similar ish to the Katoni Stokes situation. They're not under pressure week in, week out right now. But if in f- 14 weeks or 12 weeks the Broncos are struggling and these two boys' form is not good, the, re- the coach will start having to ask questions like, what, what do I do? Whereas, like, if, if these guys don't come out and play really well, then it's almost like that Reese Walsh and, and uh, Stags can play however they like, really. Yeah, so Sailor missed, obviously, uh, 2021 season, 2022 season due to off-field stuff, which has um, been washed away now, not guilty of. 24 years old now, so he obviously misses a cu- couple of key years in his mm. footballing development. But at the same time, it's like, well, we know how good he looked when he was 21 years old, so... Uh, he's a he's real smoky for me early on in the year. You know, he's not going to be starting there round one. I don't think he's um, he's not on a full time contract with them just yet. Train and trial, or um, I think he might have been upgraded to a full time. Maybe did, but anyway, no, it, he's it, good, mate. He can play. Well, after seeing that, I mean, surely. Mm. That's, and and when you look at their, I know Herbie <laughs> wants to play fullback. I personally think um, <clears throat> I haven't even named Selwyn. We haven't even talked about Selwyn in the outside backs room. I know Herbie wants to play fullback. I probably see uh, Herbie as a more of a centre. I think Selwyn's definitely a minimum a year or two away. So when you really look at it, like Tristan genuinely could be the next up for fullback. Like if Reese Walsh gets injured and they want to keep Selwyn and Herbie in their positions, mm. he could be Why the next not? guy. Why not? Yeah, it seems like there was those uh, headlines a few weeks ago that he's like set to get 
that full time contract, but there's been no confirmation yet. Okay. So yeah, I thought it was a good showing, a really good showing. It's what was interesting though is that I felt like last year's one we saw a lot of we actually saw a few first graders playing and i show i think that's like a good sign for the broncos where it shows you how young their squad is that net guys that are like weak like just their first graders um you know not even not even playing in these games whereas like it was only 12 months ago where i think it was like at least four or five players that maybe even more than end up playing first grade out of this this squad whereas i can't see I can't see more than like maybe three or four that play a few games of first grade this year. Whereas last year, I think it ended up some people even was like in that 17 week in, week out. Like you, you were watching that 17 going, so many of these guys could be really relevant. Mm. Whereas now, yeah, I, I wouldn't say any more than four of these guys play first grade this year. Yeah. And that's not a knock on them. It's it's more <coughs> just the fact that it shows good depth for the, the Brizzy Broncos and how, how how they're going right now. Because like Brendan Pecora didn't even play. Didn't he, go, he didn't even play, did he? No, he definitely didn't play because I would have noticed him. Um, so yeah, really good signs. They did what they were supposed to do. Yes, he got, he he, got named. Yeah, yeah he, def, he definitely got named, but I don't think he played. Right, okay. I don't think he played. Um, but yeah, really good signs. Really good. Like Liam Horn came on, had some good runs. Um, but outside of that, I think that they did what they were supposed to do. Like it wasn't like, oh my god, this next generation is like fucking the next huge thing. But at the same time, you're sitting there going, fuck, there's a few boys here that are impressive. Yeah, one that I didn't mind was the front rower, uh, Logan Bayless. I remember watching um, this game last year and uh, one of the front rowers, uh, I thought, did a good job. He ended up playing first grade, the one that came down from the Cowboys. Uh, Jensen. Jensen. Mm. Yeah, like, you know, he, he, he was solid. I, you've obviously got a stacked forward pack. So, as I said, I, I don't think you'll see more than four of these guys in first grade, but mm. there's, some, there's some good cattle down there. For sure, for sure. Um, now, the Dolphins. I just watched the highlights. I didn't get to watch the, the game. Um, Katoa. What, from what I saw, I, I didn't see the, the whole game, but uh, he had a hand in, it. I think, at least two tries. Uh, his ability to square the line up at such a young age is just super impressive. Got to speak to him at the Dolphins uh, launch. Really, really impressive young man. Like, a, I'm, I'm super excited for this kid's future. Yeah, so am I. Uh, I. I don't think he'll play round one. But I think as the season goes on, you'll see more and more of uh, Isaiah. He's, and mate, it doesn't shock me in the slightest that he was a good talker. Yeah. I'm not surprised that you've come down. I, I was impressed really, And yeah. I just loved his, his good nature that he had Like he just had a very happy to be there You know appreciative of the situation Whereas like sometimes you can get You know as a young kid With all this hype Everyone's talking about you as this, this absolute gun you can, It's very easy to become entitled and, and you know feel like you've already earned something That you haven't in reality um, but he was the total opposite of that. The total opposite of that. Really, really um, impressive. Yeah. Well, I, as I said before, he was at uh, Barker College last year, and he was he was school captain. So he wasn't just the superstar playing footy. He was school captain. School captain. Yeah. Holy shit! So we might have um, a genius on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I know that uh, you know as, as soon as Wayne Bennett got to have a conversation with him, he was very keen to have him at the club, and I think. I think when you have a look at this game on the weekend between him, you know, um, Tafare, Jack Bostock, Mason Teague, I think that as much as I'm a little bit worried about the Dolphins and their sort of best 17, the next generation of kids, if they bring them on properly, they've mm. got some guys that could be real stars there. <clears throat> yeah, they've got um, – uh, did you just mention Valance? Yeah, Tafare. Tafare. Very, very talented guy. Yeah. Um, like, Good character too. Oh mate, he's going to be on. He, he's going to be Conrad Harrell on and off the field all yeah. over again. It's going to be sensational. And you know, for people watching him the other night, that would have been maybe his fourteenth game of league. Yeah, he's, he's only just come from Union. Yeah, so he, he's got a lot more to offer. And he's just a big, big boy. Oh man, defending out in the centres. Holy shit! And, and even when you have a look at like the Dolphins media and everything, like they had him on the bus the other day. Walking around a group of all first graders, mm. he's played 14 games a league, and he's the guy with the microphone. Like he's going to be that sort of a guy around For that sure. club. Yeah, I, I, I reckon he'll probably jag a starting spot this year in the centres. I think eventually. Yeah. I don't think he'll be there round one, but I think he'll make his way in there. I think, yeah, I think he'll be in the mix for round one, and you know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, he jags the spot. Um, but I think. By end of year, I would be surprised if he's not in the starting 17. If they weren't playing Aitken in the centres, I'd back him for round one. But I just reckon that now they're playing Aitken out there, I reckon it'll be tough for him now. But I think I, I agree with you. I'd, I'd be shocked if we don't see him at some point yeah, this year. Because like, as soon as a forward gets injured, they're just going to go straight to Aitken to pull him, yeah. pull him in. And, and I, I, I spoke about his stats you know, on, on Bloke last year. <laughs> his Queensland stuff, 
Queensland Cup starts, like he's averaging about six tackle breaks a game at centre. Yeah, he's, he's, a he's, he's a freak. And as you said, this is his what fourteenth game of rugby league. Yeah, like there's the centre. Like when he understands, gets even better at like timing, fans in and away, all these like tiny things that games will give him, mate, he's going to be special. Not to mention the jump up in training from Queensland Cup, yeah, Redcliffe true. Dolphins, to under Wayne and with all these other first graders around mm. him. Mm. Yeah, he's going to be – him Him and the other centre, which <coughs> I, I, mm. I know that you fancied Bostock, they look very talented. Yeah, Bostock's flick pass, fucking very Gaznier-esque. I was speaking to Guru when we got in the studio this morning and we were sort of chatting about the Dolphins game. We are talking about, oh, I was like, yeah, that – the young centre looked good on the right there. And he goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, Bostock. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I had to jot it down on my notes – Bostock, former former Dragon, former Steelers player, and I was thinking like Bostock, Bo Scott, former Dragons, and then I'm like, no, like it's Jack Bostock. <laughs> uh, oh, he looks sharp though. Mm. This was Nineteens last year. Yep, uh, scored a try for him last year, the year before. Looks really promising. He, I mean, in the little that I've seen of him, he looked like on the weekend a little Zach Lomax clone, mm. right edge centre, really elusive on his feet. Mm. That little pop out the back offload. Quite tall winger. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, he looked like Zach Lomax. <laughs> yeah. He was really impressive. And he, and he uh, oh, I, I, when he made that New South Wales 19s, he was one that I, I mentioned in my podcast mm. about we'll keep an eye on this one. And within 24 hours, I got a message from him just saying how grateful he was. Oh, uh, really? He seems like a really, really good kid too. Yeah. You, you look at, you watch even these trials where you really can't take too, too much out of them. You can still, particularly with young, younger kids in the game, you can still see if they're quick. You still see if they move well. You still see yeah. if they hit hard in D. Yeah. And this kid can move. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can see their athletic ability at the very least. Mm. Um, so, I agree with you, Guru, in the sense that they, if they cultivate this young talent well enough, it doesn't mean, are they going to be world beaters? No, but they've, they've got talent there. They absolutely have talent at that club, especially young fellas coming through. Um, when you look at, like, a guy like um, Tafade's... He's, he's physicality. Like, tell me that that isn't NRL standard. Like, it's NRL standard. Um, and it's only just going to get better. Uh, and then Bostock, you know, he's, he's uh, I guess, finesse. You know, it's NRL standard. Now, the, obviously, there are other parts of their game they need to bring up. But um, then you've got Katoa, obviously, in the uh, – which, as well as, like, speaking to the other Dolphins boys, the raps this kid gets from them is just massive. Yeah. And this is not even – this is not on camera for the people. Who are, this is just, like – Talking to him as mates, like, mate, how's that Katoa kid go? They're like, mate, fucking unbelievable. And just on Bostock, I'm pretty sure he is on a development contract. So you won't – I don't think he's allowed to play till round 10, round 11 or whatever it might be. Uh, so you'll have to wait a little bit longer on him. But, like, Isaiah Katoa's in the top 30. Um, the lock forward, Mason Teague, who they got from Penrith, mm. he could be a star over the next few years. Yeah, well. He's very talented. I, the, the other night he was a little bit quiet, probably wasn't his best game, mm. but he's another one that they've taken from Penrith. So they went and got Penrith, you know, 13 and 7 mm. and brought them up there. Yeah. So, so Bostock, Bostock is on a development contract, but he's top 30, 24 and 2025. So yeah, clearly yeah. they have big yeah, raps on they him. They rate him. Yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. Dragons would have been filthy to lose him. Yeah, wow. Um, so look, good signs. I mean, it's good signs for both clubs, Dolphins and, and, and Broncos, where they're expected to win for sure. And like no one's sitting here going, oh, how great, like what an incredible performance. But they did what they were supposed to do. You know, like it, the last thing you want to do is send out a, a bunch of full-time players and they're battling with a Q Cup side. Like they get the win by six points. You're going, fuck, I know it's no good. Um, so yeah, good signs for both clubs. Anyone else stand out for you, boys? Uh, I thought for the Dolphins, the winger, I think it's Setu Two. He had a very good game. He, he scored a try where um, Isaiah Katoa put up a huge sort of spiral yeah. bomb. Great catch. He just came through and took it. Yeah, he he, he did a couple of good things. So um, also the front rower JJ Collins, who's he's been around first grade for a few years. He's never quite um, kicked on. I, I've heard that he's doing well up there. So he's at the Raiders last year. Yeah, well, yeah, he's been around a few year pops, before, yeah. I think. Yeah, so he's another guy that's always had um, potential. The fullback too, Trey Fuller. He, he's a very talented kid. I think he was a little bit quiet in this game, but he's very talented. So, that's, yeah, as I said before, the Dolphins, as much as their best 17 might not have the superstars, they've got a few guys that could be the next superstars mm. over the next few years. Did you get a yarn to uh, the goat up at the Dolphins night, Marky Nichols? No, I didn't. Actually, check the Instagram and you'll find out why. He, uh, the big fella of food poisoning. 
Food poisoning. Food poisoning. I thought he was uh, snubbed as captain up there, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Old nosey. I thought he would be in a shoe in for captaincy. Mate, they had the whole. They did the whole thing was being put on hold because the great goat hadn't rocked up yet. <laughs> Nearly didn't do the night. And then bloody he. Then I, so we were waiting out the front, sweating so hot. It was so hot and humid. Um, and then eventually we got a call from the media guy. Like a, he came over to us and he's like, "Oh, Marky Mark's got bloody food poisoning. He's not coming." I was like, "No, we've missed out on an interview with the goat." Um, yeah, all right, yeah, good signs, really good signs for both uh, clubs. Uh, but it, as we always say, it is only a trial. Everything could take you know, absolutely pumped next week, and yeah. you know we'll be sitting here talking about probably it. Probably the last guy to touch on, which is interesting, which it sort of flew under the radar. Uh, Otakolo, who came off the bench in Jersey 21, he was the hooker that played for New Zealand last year, the Warriors. Mm. They released him. There was rumours that he was going to arrive at the Penrith Panthers, but he's, he's seemingly um, at the Dolphins now. So another hooker that they could potentially add to their <coughs> ranks there. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now, All-Stars preview. Kickoff time is 3.45pm New South Wales time. It's in New Zealand for the first time, Rotorua. Uh, how good? Like well, that's so fucking good. How good's the kickoff time? <coughs> oh, afternoon, mate. Saturday afternoon footy doesn't get much better. Oh. That tin just go. <laughs> 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 it's like four, the sun's out. It's beautiful. We've got the windows open. The footy's playing. Fucking doesn't get honestly doesn't get. You know how it gets better if you're drinking bloke beer. That's how it gets fucking better. <laughs> uh, now, the multi side. Uh, Joy Manu out with a facial fracture. Hargreaves ruled out with a back flare up and saw Hammy. Asi, Toa, Nas, Wateni Zelezniak, also out. <laughs> Simpkins, Thompson, Paul Turner, Diaz, Toa, Pitama, all added to the squad. Um, like, I probably only really know two of those players, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Like, you know, obviously, as these guys come through, we will know who they are and we'll, we'll be massive fans of them, but I don't really know the other players. Um, Indigenous side, Fox, not 100%, he so he ruled himself out. Ma'am Smith, uh, Will Smith, Chris Smith, also out. Laurie, Kelly, Tass, Trindle brought in to replace them. So let's go through the Māori one. Joey Manu out with a facial fracture. Uh, damn, like, honestly, I think with all these injuries and people being ruled out, two things. First, like, it shows you, like, guys, it is so hard to play rugby league at a professional level. Like, this is how many people that can't, Get to the game because their bodies are fucked, and they're only four weeks out from the from the, you know, from the season. Um, from a from a broader perspective, like yeah, for sh- it definitely you know you need your stars in the game. Like I understand that there's a culture behind this, so that's always going to be the main focus. But having your stars out there playing is always going to help. Um, I do really hope going. I think as Guru, you've already implied, like said, I think last week, due to the fact of being a World Cup year, I think that has really kind of we're seeing the effects of that um so i don't think this is going to be an ongoing problem but i hope i hope it's not what do you reckon Gary? yeah the, and the other thing as well you got to remember is the nrl did make the season two weeks longer this year as well mm-hmm. so i'm hoping it's a perfect storm of longer season world cup shorter pre-season uh hopefully it's it's different next year um i, I really hope so anyway because mm-hmm. i really don't want us to lose this game <coughs> like we've lost so many other games in the past that are pre-season because this game just means so much more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that this is really one of those games where we have to draw a line in the sand and say this is too important to rugby league to allow our – not greed. We all want to win. We all want to win at clubs. We, you know, we're desperate for it. But I do think the impact of games like this are far more – are far bigger long-term than, you know, a player getting injured for a few weeks or whatever – um, especially with the fact that I think it's like nearly, was it 50%, maybe even 60 that are Polynesian and indigenous, indigenous in the game now. Um, what do you got That's there, mate? going to rise to. Bit of an interesting tweet from Phil Gould regarding players pulling out All-Stars. He says, two forces at play. Uh, firstly, RPA dictating when players can return to pre-season training after end of previous season. And he said more on this another time. So clearly he's got a gripe there. And secondly, NRL scheduling a pre-season All-Stars match after a World Cup in UK, as you guys just spoke about. So Gus, is, he's already brought up that whole doesn't like the fact that they have to have eight weeks off. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's his opinion, but it has been something he's been... I would love to see evidence, like data, that shows that that's the reason why. Because um, I don't know... 
I, I can't connect the two. Like I what? So because they came back a bit later, is it, did I, that's why they got injured? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to connect those dots. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. But um, maybe he's just saying like because they haven't been back for long enough, they're just not up to scratch for for a rep game. For, for yeah, for a game. but like for example, it, that's more to do with the World Cup because if the World Cup wasn't on, they would have been back what six weeks earlier. Yeah, so it's like. It's it's not it's not the eight weeks. It's the the longer season that that makes him not come back early, um, and I think he may be referring personally to Ado Carr because he said he's not one hundred percent, so he had to rule himself out. Um, again, who was one of the best players in the World Cup? It was it was Josh Ado Carr. So I, I'm not too sure about that. You know, RLPA dictating terms like the the players expecting to have eight weeks off. I think that's a fair like I think that's pretty fair with how much they fucking smash their bodies to pieces. Um, so I don't know that was a, That's a bit strange I, th- I think it's more The World Cup Yeah I think so as well Mate as I said I, I just hope Next year when we don't Have the World Cup And we're sitting down Here again I hope we have got Full squads here Yeah agreed What do you reckon Timmy mm. I've, uh, I've been to Rotorua International Stadium Saw a Junior Rouge Versus Junior Kiwis game A few years back It was the infamous Marty Tapao Running down Dane Gagai <laughs> game Best clip on YouTube uh, front row running down in a lightning quick fullback at the time. Stinky city, but that is because of the sulphur in the air. <laughs> I learned. Don't they have the, the hot baths the, as well? Yeah, the hot springs, yep. that, and it's all the sulphur, and it's yeah, really smelly, but you get used to it. So, awesome stadium. There's going to yep. be a ball out there. Uh, as for the game, I think you boys touched on it pretty well. Yeah, sure, it's disappointing to lose these stars for the game. But at the same time, what we do know is that the players coming in, uh, you know, obviously to step down in class, but. It means so much to everyone that's going to be out there. It's not your regular pre-season trial game. You know, they're playing for their families, for their, their cultures, that sort of thing. So they'll be giving everything. And in trial games, you know, the, the, the foot's taken off the pedal in terms of blokes whacking blokes, blokes running that extra 10% harder and all of that. It's not quite there. This is the game where it will be there. So I, I'm still really looking forward to it. And, you know, there's a few lesser names that have popped up there that we get to have a look at. Yeah, Playing for sure. against... NRL quality players So It's exciting in that sense for sure Oh massive opportunity If you're a young fella That's been called in Like mm. There's Contract upgrades There's being signed By other clubs If you're only on a one year deal Which most of these guys Probably are Well they, like, there's even some stories Like young um, Credence Toya He was with Canterbury last year Got released Signed with Burley He's on a train to trial With the Titans He was meant to play In their trial this weekend Now he's playing all stars No yeah. way yeah. That's sick That's so good uh, and it's the you know the off stuff off field stuff is um, is really really important too. I'm sure the boys will still get over for that. Uh, so basically, the Indigenous All Stars men Bailey Butler, Cobbo. I mean, we read them out last week, so you guys would already know them. Um, with these outs for the Maldives and the Indigenous, do we see do we change how we feel about how the game's going to go at all, mate? Uh, in the most respectful way possible, I actually think that when you look at who both teams have lost I think it kind of evens it up a little bit mm. as far as you know I think it's Nelson the Sofa Solomona and JWH mm. are out and you were looking at um, the Maldi forward pack last week going they're just going to play through the middle they're going to yeah. dominate I actually kind of think it squares it up and yeah you know the indigenous side has lost you know some stars um, Josh Adokai is a man but they've still got your walkers your Latrell so um, <laughs> as much as I prefer to see all the stars there I think it potentially could even this game up a little bit and make it potentially more interesting. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Especially like Nas and um, Hargreaves and Manu ruled out like it, them three massive, massive outs. Yeah, if you could keep Manu in the side and lose Rhea Hargreaves and Nelson, oh, I think that would have evened it up just about perfectly. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it's a total train wreck. Mm. What do you reckon, Timmy? Yeah, look, I don't enjoy agreeing with Guru, but sometimes it has to happen. And this is one of those times where uh, I think he's right. I think it balances out. This time last week, we were chatting about, I thought the Maori forward pack was going to be too dominant um, for the Indigenous side. And I, I saw them winning off the back of that. This absolutely levels the playing field a little bit. So that, that forward battle through the middle is going to tighten up. And it's going to give probably the Indigenous, that superstar backline, more of an opportunity to you know flex their muscle and show their star power. So... Uh, you know, maybe might be leaning a little bit more to the Indigenous side now, but it's result-wise, I think it's going to tighten the game up. Man, I can't wait to see the crowd and, like, just so good. It's so good for the game. Um, yep, so we'll obviously review the game next week, guys. Uh, now, Liquor Legends promo for Queensland, guys. You spend 30 bucks and you can get a six-pack of Midi, bloke Midi, 
for ten dollars. That is right. In every liquor legends in Queensland, head in there now. You spend thirty bucks. You know, buy the missus some nice wine. You can get a midi six pack for literally ten dollars. So what an incredible offer! That's it. Every liquor legends guys. So they're supporting us. So go and support them. Independently owned. All that great stuff. Every liquor legends in Queensland. Spend thirty. Get a six pack of midi for ten bucks. Get in. Grab grab a six pack of midi for the All Stars game. I mean, perfect. Perfect. Um, and for New South Wales, the cases of lager at a discounted price. So in every Liquor Legends in New South Wales, you can get lager at a discounted price. And in every Liquor Legends in Queensland, you spend 30 and you get a case of mini for 10 bucks. This goes till February 21st. So make sure to get in there. Make sure to get in there. Now, some big news. NRL player news and re-signing. Liam Martin re-signed. But the big news about it is one year re-signing. That's interesting to me. <coughs> It shows that uh, the Penrith Panthers cap is getting fucking massively squeezed. Uh, it shows they're sticking to quite a rigid uh, plan because you'd have to think if Crichton doesn't re-sign next year, surely there's at least, you know, and, and they, they came out and said that they were going to offer him 700K. So if that's the case, they've at least, they know they've got 700K unless they spend it in a week, which I doubt. So they must be being really rigid in their squad planning to not take part of that 700k and give Liam Martin the two to three year deal. Uh, what do you think about this one? Yeah, it's an interesting one. They've obviously got a lot of quality back rowers there. Uh, like you got Scotty Sorensen that's still going to be sitting on the pine. I don't have Zach Hoskins in my team at the moment. And, you know, he was incredibly impressive coming into a Broncos team mid season. Full process and everything at the Penrith Panthers. How He's a guy you. that come in. You got no, Maverick Dyer. How dare you, Guru? <laughs> Broncos preseason is as good as Penrith preseason. We just struggle to put it together, mate. <laughs> We're young, and Penrith aren't young. Fucking what it? <laughs> anyway, sorry. sorry apologies. You there. Uh, yeah, apologies, bro. Uh, yeah, they've got a lot of back rowers there. Maverick guys coming through as well. So a lot of talented guys. So it'll be interesting. So, you know, as you said, their salary cap must be getting pushed as it should be. Yeah, that's the price you pay. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the position you want to be in. Oh. We're struggling to keep all of our superstars because we've developed them all so well. And we're going so good that the probably the best Australian back rower for the World Cup is willing to sign a one-year deal when he would be getting offered at least five, six hundred k by other clubs. Um, what a sad state of affairs where a Brisbane Broncos preseason is no longer considered an elite-level standard. <laughs> Fuck, that hurts so much, It is bro. crazy to think that. I know, it hurts so yeah. much, bro. Like, Because, like, I'm, you know... I'm so used to like, we've got the best in the comp. You come to a Broncos preseason, you're fucking, anyway. Sorry, just a bit of pain and trauma coming out there, boys. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, back to Liam Martin. What do you reckon, Timmy? Yeah, I mean, touched on in that they do have some really promising back rows coming through there. Um, I suppose there's just so much talent in this Penrith system and juniors. And you look at this year, we're going to see... Taruva hopefully explode uh, in his opportunities the first two rounds at the very least. Uh, Sonny Luke and you know Taylor May uh, hit the big time last season and maybe they're just sitting there going look at any stage in the next year or two we might have to pay big money for any of these sorts of blokes to keep potential future superstars in our team so in signing Lee Martin on a one year deal maybe it allows a little, little bit more flexibility around these guys coming up through the system so <coughs> yeah I mean as I said there could be, could be a million different reasons why Lee Martin signed for one year deal but great get for them and if they the fact they got him for one year and if it gives him that flexibility, huge win for Penrith. Yeah. And just to add to their depth, there's not a move I would make, but Isaac Tungo can play back row as well. Mm. Like that, they might have so many CTWs they're willing to let Critter go, mm. move Isaac there and then bring up that. They've got Tom Jenkins, they've got Taruva, heap of talented guys there. And that's the beauty of where the Panthers are sitting. They can, similar to what they did with Garner, they can go and sign whoever they want for unders. Mm. I know, it's, it's incredible. And like, I don't think they get enough credit, the Penrith Panthers. I mean, they get, we give them plenty of credit. But like Taylor and May Tungle came in last year essentially, and now it's not. We're not even like oh, they're rookies anymore. We're just like they're just gun. Like Taylor and May had an incredible first season. Tungle was outstanding, and I understand Tungle played like, you know what, six games or whatever off the bench the year before. But like this is how good this system is right now, where not just one guy, two guys come in in their debut years and now they are established first graders like you wouldn't there's not a single person that would say Tungo or May's position is under threat it's incredible yeah and like you look around this competition how many guys are in other teams that aren't getting regular first grade spots if the Panthers reached out to them they'd go on, like 
Um, see Ho Chen from the Canberra Raiders. Oh. Imagine him if they said, hey, you want to play outside? Don't Nathan start Cleary, 80 shit, minutes. Guru. Don't start. Bring him home. <laughs> bring him home. Him home. Yeah, he's, you stole him, bro. You stole him from the, oh, with the, the Bulldogs. But bring him home, bro. He's a Penrith boy. Please. You Raiders, so honestly. Yeah, you don't it. develop any of your own players. Seriously. Oh. You're, as, you're as bad as the Roosters. <laughs> tell, that to the good, tell that to the good folk of Wagga next week. <laughs> when we go there. Some oh, of the legends that we've uh, developed out in our regional areas. I won't get out of Wagga alive. <laughs> no, I'll you fucking won't. get It'll be pitchforks. We'll be chased out with pitchforks, boys. <laughs> um... I'm worried about how much they're going to like him, mate. Yeah, I mean, you may be the beak for the day. You may take the beak mantle. Someone has to like me somewhere. <laughs> mate, I, I was at a barbecue on Saturday and talking to them about bloke and everything, and um, it came up that they were talking about their sons, and, I, and they went to the same school as Tim. I go, you don't know Tim, do you? And I opened up this Pandora's box of how much of a good fucking bloke Tim is for about oh, half an hour. Oh, yuck. I'm thinking, who's the guy that I spend all this time with every fucking yeah, week? Yeah, seriously. You fucking split personality or what? I'm going home on these tours, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it, eh? <laughs> if, I, if I see, if we go out to Wagga or whatever and then you get carried, like, chaired out... <laughs> That'll do me. That'll Chad fucking out, do Chad me. Chad out in my, my RMs and my Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Liam Martin's not re-signing. It shows uh, loyalty from Liam Martin for sure. I think I think a lot of credit needs to go to Liam Martin. And this, these are the kind of contracts where, you know, everyone loves to blow up about the player that took this four-year deal at another club. But I'm sure that same uh, amount of uh, – it won't be as vocal in regards to – the current Australia wide running forward, arguably the best player on the field for grand final, um, just signed a one-year deal to stay loyal. I mean, that, that deserves a rap. That deserves a rap from Liam Martin, but it also deserves a rap from uh, the Penrith Panthers. They can, they can get that kind of loyalty. Uh, and he's a good country boy, Liam. Yeah, and I think the timing of this could be interesting. Obviously, you've got, you know, kick out leaving the Panthers. There's a question mark out there. Just maybe their right edge become the strong side next year, mm. and if so, <clears throat> Liam mm. Martin coming off contract at the end of that season, like we we might be heading into a career year in 2023, realistically. Yeah, that's a that's a good point because like it was towards the back end of last year that he started kicking on, and the confidence he'll take from the Australian tour, um, sorry the World Cup tour. Yeah, so great news for Panthers, great news for Liam Martin. Uh, now, one of the great stories of the week, great stories of the week. As any footy fan, if you if this didn't bring a tear to the eye, then do you even watch rugby league? Josh Reynolds gets a top 30 spot, upgraded from a training trial to a full-time gig at the Bulldogs. I mean, talk about one of the great stories. I, I don't care if he doesn't play a game all year. This is home is Bulldogs for Josh Reynolds. And sometimes you get the happy ending. And I think that this is the happy ending for Joshy Reynolds. He doesn't have to play a game. Yeah. Mm. It's what he'll do. And I, mate, I cannot believe how many people out there don't understand that. Mm. The amount of people I had messaging me are, you know, oh, gives away penalties, brain explosions. Fuck. He's what Canterbury is. He is like it, they've they've always had these guys that have just represented what Canterbury is, and I think they they've lost their way over the last few years, and mm. I think they'd be the first ones to admit that. And I think this is this is a great sign of where they want to be again. Yeah, it it sends a really strong message to the playing group as well, because like Josh Reynolds, notoriously one of the best trainers in any squad, uh, he prides himself on it. So when you go, he got upgraded. The message it sends to everyone else is like, this is the standard. Like, yeah, okay, he may be past his best footy. Yeah, okay, you know, he's not as good as our starting this, that, the next thing. But if you do all the little things right, we'll stay loyal to you. And if, if you can send that message to everyone, that's when you will turn them all into the best versions of themselves. I, I reckon he'll go very close to being there um, 14 for round one. I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised. Beyond our Odo's, he's out injured. So I, I reckon Josh Reynolds could quite possibly be the next guy out there. Mm. It, it would not surprise me. Like, imagine yeah. if you're sitting on the bench for Canterbury waiting to go on, you got him in your ear. Yeah, just Josh Reynolds is pumping you up. What do you reckon, Timmy? It is, yeah. So, like, looking at worst-case scenario from an on-field perspective, let's say, you know, he doesn't play this season or hardly gets a crack, and, you know, to a degree you've, you've wasted from a footballing centre, a spot in your top 30 uh, with a player who, you know, maybe he's passed his best, spent a lot of time at, at Hull FC and was only sort of okay over there. What it'll bring to the doggies as a club and the things you boys have just touched on to, to the, as you said, rediscovering the identity of this such proud rugby league club, the culture of the club on and off the field, it means so much more. I should, like, was it a one-year deal? Yeah. A yeah. one-year one year deal. <clears throat> 
you know, the, the dogs have gone through this such dark time the last five, six years, whatever it's been. He can now, he's the sign of, all right, we're coming out of this. The light's not at the end of the tunnel. We've reached it. And what he'll do for this playing group is going to be outstanding. You know, if they can get him um, on field for a, a game of Belmore Oval and Josh oh. Reynolds comes onto the ground and the crowd will just erupt. Every player on that field will go, how good is this to play for the Canterbury Bulldogs? Uh, so, <coughs> and then, you know, the glass half full is, all right, maybe he does still have a bit left in the tank yeah. as that 14 where he can come on and be a terrific utility for the Dogs. Um, you know he gives everything he's got every time he goes out there. So... Uh, and I'm with Guru. There, there probably is a 14 role lingering around there for the doggies this season, and hopefully it goes to Josh Reynolds. It's uh, it's interesting. The whole you know, I, we speak about it a lot, and I think a lot of the, you know our listeners they understand it, they get it. You know, we've all been in working environments where there may be a guy that's not the best worker in the sense of like he works, but he's not the most skilled. But the amount of happiness and joy he brings to the team is just as important as the guy that is extremely skilled and gets the job done. And you look at, okay, the Queensland dominant era, when we talked about the tradition and sending like, what is it to be a bulldog? When Queensland were dominant, and they still do it to today, that, and you could even ask the boys that went over to the World Cup this year with Mal Meninga as coach, they spent mo a lot of their time going back and looking at the history of Queensland, what it means to be a Queenslander, people that have come before them, sacrifices that have been made before them to make that jersey great. Um, when you look at a guy like, I mean, one of the takeaways Seabold said he, that he probably learnt the most of the Broncos was he probably didn't pay enough to tradition. And I think that this is a really good example of the Bulldogs going, we need to find something more than them just being professional athletes. We need them to be bought into a cause that is bigger than themselves. And how do you do that? You do it with a guy like Josh Reynolds that truly buys in, like he'll, he'll do anything for that club and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a great signing. And I mean, like I, I've seen a lot of the comments online, oh, he's got penalties in him, he's got brain explosions. You think about when Canterbury's at their best, they've got shit in their game. Yeah. They're the team you go, Dogs of oh, War God, is lit. That's Dogs literally of war. what they're called. Yeah, like, what, you think war is all fucking hunky-dory and you, nice? You can go back to, you know, Steve Mortimer's days. They were the toughest teams in the comp. The Terry Lambs, like, they, I think, what was it, the, the 88 grand final? They were playing Balmain, and their best player got knocked out off screen mm. and had to be taken from the field, Ellery Hanley. And they just went, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know what <laughs> happened. Sorry. Unlucky. Didn't see Didn't see nothing. Didn't see, yeah. Um, um, and then you've got guys like Willie Mason, that Sonny dogs, Bill. They were ferocious. O'Mealy, uh, Andrew Ryan. Like, like oh, yeah. Will Tarsi <laughs> and Sonny Bill coming off the pine. <laughs> yeah, they were really uh, just knock about. Like, they were... Yeah, out there to fucking kill you. And even more recently, when they went to that 2014 grand final, like fucking James Graham, yeah, Cassiano, Pritchard, all these guys, they were maniacs. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mick Ennis. Yeah. This is who they are. Yeah, They're I embracing know. who they are. Adam Perry, Corey Hughes, Jamal. <laughs> oh, Wesley, some of the greats. And I. Where do we stop with this list? <laughs> David <The dog>. Stagg. <laughs> Dad hasn't got a feature yet. I was, I was going to say it. I thought, <laughs> The oh, great Sammy Perrett. I was like, I don't want to overkill it. <laughs> Sammy Perrett. Uh, the great Sammy Perrett. Oh. Uh, I was going to say, I've just had a look through the squad. The Because of Bailey beyond the, uh, Bailey's out, it's probably out of Josh Reynolds and Funamau Brown for that 14 mm. spot. So do you reckon, do you reckon Reid Marnie, how, how long, how, do you reckon Reid Marnie's going to play 80 minutes, first of all? And secondly, based off that question, who do you think is going to get that 14 role? Well, I think that if they do hope Reid Marnie play 80, I think actually Reynolds gets it because he can play in the halves. Whereas I think uh, Brown is more of a, a nine, maybe 13. Um, it just really depends on the rotation that they're going to go for. I personally, and we've spoken about this before, I think that like if you can with Reed Marnie, don't get him playing 80. Get him playing 65 to 70. Um, I know he would want to play 80, but I, I just reckon bring you know, just it prolongs his career. And my, to be, if I'm Cameron Serrato, if he's not in my 17, I'm telling him just do what you'd normally do. Mm. Be in the huddle before the game. Mm, yeah. Be walking around the like, just be in your tracksuit. Do what you'd normally fucking do. What you're good at, and get the best out of everyone else around you. Yeah, agreed. I, I'm happy with Marnie at 80. I, I think he's definitely got it yep. in him. I, I get the the argument to play him as a 65 minute player, but especially with this doggy squad structure, if this gives them you know another middle forward or uh, forward or utility sort of back that they have as an option there, which you know is so vital these days. If you can get a decent utility back on your bench, mm. Marnie playing 80 allows that to happen. Yeah. Um, whereas carrying, you know, someone like New Brown or uh, Josh Reynolds makes that a little bit tougher. Mm. So because it's that same fourteen role. 
I just think the because the pace of the game has increased, I guess was, you'd say substantially or a, a, a decent amount. I just think that a makeup of a side where all of our top tier ones really usually have at least one small fella on the bench to take that pace up to the next level. But if if Reed plays eighty, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Like one last thing on Josh Reynolds, the first. Belmore Oval game is in round three, so we don't have to wait long. It's Sunday afternoon, oh. and it's against the Tigers, who we just played S- for. Gun. So no if way. Josh Reynolds is playing, just that game, get him on the bench at least, just to be- bring that and put bums in seats. The grub. Uh, when you think about his last game for Canterbury, that was it the the farewell at Belmore. I think they played Newcastle that night. The crowd rushed onto the field and everything. And like, well, you think it through the history of Canterbury, like how many players would have got that? Oh. And then keep in mind, Josh Reynolds is a guy that hasn't won a comp. Yep. He arrived in first grade not knowing what position he was. He was just tough. He's played halfback, hooker, five eight. Like I mean, even now, would you say he's a five eight or he's a hooker? Yeah. Like he's just a t- a good footballer that's tough. Yeah. Just rips and tears. Yeah. That's just it. Rips and tears. Um, so yeah, great stuff. The doggies are. Look, they're just doing really good things at the moment. Now, look, it all means nothing. Come round one, it really all means nothing. But I just, I'm so excited for that area. And they've got such an enthusiastic fan base as well. So I'm really excited for the doggies. Uh, now, Eels re-sign Will Benzini. Great re-signing. Will Benzini's a really interesting case because I feel like he's gone under the radar. But we're talking about an 18, 19-year-old centre that first year held his own. Second year, I think that he was impacting games. He's been in a grand final. He grew up playing with a guy like uh, Suwali'i. So, like, this is the, the caliber of player he is. And I just don't know whether he gets enough appreciation for what his future could hold. Like, how many 18-year-old centers really come in and handle the physicality of it? I'm tr- like, when was the last one that, that came in? Yeah, and- the, 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 there's not a heap, but I, but I think there's enough that people take it for granted sometimes. Mm. I think people definitely do. And, and like... This kid probably hasn't got, you know, all the superstar raps that so elite he's got and everything. But as you said, he has handled himself week in, week out. And even when he's played his poor games, the next week he's backed it up with solid performances, which tells yep. you all you need to know about him. So, yeah, I think this is a great get for Parramatta. What do you reckon, Timmy? It's funny to say he's flown under the radar because I thought the exact same, Kempi. Mm. And it's with one of the most high-profile clubs in the NRL who just made a grand final, and he's a young bloke who's just killed it. I don't know, like, how has he flown under the radar to that degree? I suppose one argument would be maybe that Parramatta are a quite left-edge dominant. They, it's one of the best edge, attacking edges in the NRL. So that edge sees a lot of ball with through Dylan Brown uh, and Sean Lane. On the right edge where Penasini plays, they, Mitchie Moses would play short to IPAP, Isaiah Papali'i a lot. Mm. So maybe it just limited, limits his opportunity a little bit out there. With Papali'i gone... Do we see Penasini get a lot more ball and a lot more early ball out there? I would suggest probably yes, especially if it's, um, you know, Maddo early on. Maddo might stay in that middle rotation. So it might be someone like Jack Murchie being the, the edge back rower. So yeah. I think, you know, potentially this is the year that we see Penasini get more ball, more quality ball in attacking zones. Mm. Uh, and maybe we're not saying in the, by the end of 2023 that he's flown under the radar and he could be a star. He's a gun. He's a, he's a gun and he's, he's a teenager. He's a teenager mm. and... The consistency, like how often we see them come in, get dropped, come in, get dropped. So, yeah, Bensini is, uh, I think he's flown under the radar. I think, it, I agree with you, Tim. I'm surprised, like, he's had a, one of the biggest clubs in the comp. You'd, you'd think that there'd be more hype around the fact that not only is he, like, he came through with Suwali'i, all that kind of stuff. Like, there's, everything points to this kid's just getting started. The best indication of how good this kid is is the fact that no one's spoken about how much Parramatta have missed Michael Jennings. It's a good point. No one has said it. It's a really good point. It's a People really good have point. almost forgotten that Jenko left at the end of 2020. This kid de- debuted 2021. Yeah, that's a really good point. Is, is there any chance, and this is uh, baseless, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> hey, we, we do a lot of baseless yeah, yeah. stuff here. <laughs> Some of the best content comes from baseless. So comes. Uh, now that... You know, Tom Opicic is gone, Wanga Blake, I don't even know where he fits into this, but could uh, Penasini switch to the left edge at all? That that uh, Obviously, the centre spot, they've got, you know, my be- I don't know who will play the other centre off all this season. Could we see Penasini move to the left, or do we see him as more of a right-side specialist? Got a decent sort of, especially, I suppose, defensive combination with Mitchie Moses out there, but 
do we see him put in more of an attacking position on their dominant mm. left edge? Well, it would, I'd be interested to see what, what ball he carries with or what, what hand mm. he carries a ball with because I think that's a, usually a really big indicator as to what side of the field they like to yep. play. Um, so their left is their strong side. So I wonder, is he left-handed and he can fend right? I'm just trying to, I feel like, again, I don't know if this is correct or not, but early on he was playing left side and then might have moved, made the switch to the right. Anyway, we'll be able to confirm it over the next week or so. But yeah. um, if he did move that left edge, probably a lot more attacking, well, definitely more attacking oh, opportunities for him. Oh, sure, for sure. that edge just carves. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they start the season. Um, he's a right-hand carry too. He's a right-hand carry, so okay, That's probably why. probably won't. That's why he's on yeah. the other side. But it'll be interesting because, uh, like, apparently Wong and Blake, he's got a broken arm, so I'm not sure if he'll start round one. And your mate from Canberra, um, Simonson, Simonson. Yeah. Um, he's also looking like he won't play round one. So this Parramatta backline, it, it might be in for a bit of a shake-up. Yeah, start okay. The season. Man, Wong and Blake, like, I, I just want him to kill it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's so talented. He's so athletically gifted. And then you see, you see these flashes of brilliance and you go, oh, there it is. Like, fuck yeah. So I, I, I fingers crossed for Wonga Blake this year that he finds his position and he just has a fucking gun year, a gun year. Interesting year for Sivo. Really interesting year in my opinion for Sivo. Like we spoke about last year in regards to these new wingers need to get through like 15 to 20 carries. I wonder, I wonder what... What's, because, like, last year he had a few injuries. Then he came back, had some big, big moments. Well, he was coming back from an ACL last year. Yeah. So this is the year you expect it to jump. To jump yep. again. Because, like, I, I, think, I still think he's got a minimum another 10% in his game. I, I, I don't think we've hit his ceiling yet. Yeah, I, as you said, I think 10% percent's unders. I think he's yeah. got heaps more in his game. Yeah. Um, now, Knights signed Lockie Miller, uh, as we were discussing a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there has been no confirmation as to whether they swapped. Now, could you try to find that, Matty, if you could? Whether they swapped the young front rower that played for New South Wales under-19s, there's been no confirmation that that has happened. So it's going to be very hard for us to judge. If they got Lockie Miller just straight up, I think it's a massive win, like huge, huge get. If they swap someone for him in the under-19s front rower, I think that's actually probably not good. Um, thoughts on the... We'll just go Lockie Miller signed. They didn't swap anyone. I think they needed a fullback. Uh, I think he's a guy they would have got good value off. Um, I think you also need to look at... Oh, Maddie's Gap confirmed. 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 He's already there. He's already at Cronulla. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know that changes that. things a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But from Newcastle's perspective, they needed a fullback. If you have a look at who's currently building this Knights team, it's Peter Parr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but look, he was the guy that built that Cowboys side that won the comp. Uh, Matty Bowen left. They were looking for a fullback. Do they get a superstar? He got Lachlan Coote. Yeah. And he just played a very basic role. Yeah. He sort of controlled that right edge. I think you'll see Lockie Miller play a very similar role. Mm. I think he'll stay sort of down one corridor. That's how they'll play, similar to how Penrith used Edwards. I think it'll be that sort of role. So I think it'll be very simplified. He's a good ball runner. I don't think he'll have to do too much ball playing or anything like that. I think he'll play through the middle and probably down the right edge. Jack O will play both sides and then KP. He'll be able to play both sides, but we know how good he is on that left edge. And I sort of think that's how Newcastle line up this year. Timmy? Yeah, I mean, gr- great signing for them because they needed a fullback so desperately. Uh, is he going to be their saviour this season? I have my reservations big time. He's a good footballer. He's not young by any means. What do we say? He's 26 or 27? 28. So 28. 28, obviously come from rugby union. We saw some snippets of him last year and he was really good. I just, the reality is that he was the, the third choice fullback at the Cronulla Sharks and he wasn't behind superstars. He was behind Will Kennedy and Kay Dykes. Um, that doesn't mean he can't be a gun for them. As Guru said, really great running game. He's very quick. My reservation always with fullbacks is can they ball play? Mm. Um, they need him to be a ball player. Uh, I, I think he'll be solid for them. I just, I think Newcastle fans... So I, th- I feel like they've got in them that he's going to be this next superstar for them, Lockie Miller. Mm. And I just think they need to rein it in a little bit and think he can come in and do a job for us. But, mm. yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it, when you in a vacuum, just that signing, great signing. Like, you, you needed a fullback. He didn't break the bank. He's ready-made as well. He's 28 years old. He's not 18, 19. So you don't have to worry about professionalism and, and all, all that stuff. Uh, and I think that his ball running and the work he gets through will actually be something that they've 
been missing to a degree because Pong has been in and out so much. Whereas you look at the Penrith Panthers with Dylan Edwards, like they can almost guarantee they've got a fullback that's running for 200 to 250 metres a game. I think we're going to see a situation where I wouldn't be surprised if Lockie Miller doesn't have in the top five average most metres. Um, if he plays the whole season, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't average the most metres um, in the comp as in top five. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if tackle breaks, he's up there um, in the top five as well. That's how good his running game is. Now, the thing is, though, is in today's game, you need so much more as a team to score points and beat the big dogs. And I wonder, sometimes when you've got a guy that, it takes a while to find the balance between taking 20 hit-ups and then being where you need to be on the field that helps the team. And so I wonder how much, how long it's going to take Ponger and Miller to get each, other, each other's grooves of like, mate, I need you not to take a second hit-up. I need you to be over there. I wonder how long it's going to take. Which keep in mind, they're pretty much not going to train together until the season starts because KP's out at the moment with the, his quad yeah. injury. So that, that, that's the big worry with Newcastle, that you've got a new lock, a new halfback, a new a guy moving from fullback to six, a new fullback, and the main guy, Ponger, isn't going to be there for the start of the preseason. I, I, I think it's interesting too, and um, he's obviously signed a one-year contract. Um, Lockie Miller, he's 28, as you said. I watched the Knights SG ball on the weekend, and there's been a lot of talk for the last few years about this fullback they've got. Mm. And they reckon he is – I've always heard that he's like Pappenhausen all over. Mm. I would watch this kid on the weekend. Mm. And obviously he's in SG ball, which is under 19. So he played there last year when he was young. He got player's player. I wouldn't be surprised if you see this kid, um, Fletcher Sharp, make it into this squad. or, in or get a 24? Kid. Probably 24. I reckon that's why they've signed him on a one-year deal here. Okay. Miller? Miller signed a three-year deal. Oh, is that, I just read it. It's only for 23 on the Sharks thing. Is it three years? On NRL.com, he signed till 2025. Okay. okay. Any other good insights, mate? Or? <laughs> no, I think that'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he's one that I think up at Newcastle, which all Newcastle fans will be well and truly aware of him. Um, yep. Fletcher Sharp, very impressive on the weekend. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, he would have signed a three-year deal, but it would not be a big deal. So <laughs> it, it would be on the price of a backup fullback. So even if this, even though it's a three-year deal, if this young fella comes through, like you were just saying, Guru, it won't hurt their salary cap to put Lockie Miller in Q Cup, uh, in New South Wales Cup, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they've given themselves a flexibility of like, look, if this guy does explode, because there's no way he, like, there's no way they would have signed him on a three-year deal that's a big deal. That, it would have been one or the other, really. It would have been I mean, like, just to add to it, the quote from Peter Parr, we have signed um, we have signed Miller predominantly to play fullback. We also believe he has the versatility, versatility to play multiple positions. So I, I still reckon there's a good chance that that's probably how they're looking at it. Yeah, okay. Just to clear it up, I think it said one year on Sharks because he had one year left on his Sharks contract. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, now, the other side of this whole thing, they let go of this young fella. Can you, what's his name again? Max Bradbury. Max Bradbury. This is, this is the, the glass half empty of the situation. Is I guess from just a purely fan's perspective, do you feel that you're going to play finals footy by signing Lockie Miller, Miller there? If you feel that will be better, but we won't make the top eight, then I'd say the trade is not a good trade because you're basically trading away a potential gun in the front row for to finish, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th. And, it, and I kind of like feel like rugby league has gotten to a point where like ninth to 14th, it honestly doesn't even, or 15th, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's like, we finished ninth, we finished 14th. Like fucking, we didn't play finals footy. That's all that really matters. So, it's like, unless they play, play finals footy this year, and even then you may still be able to argue that, you know, letting go of an under-19s prop. Like, we know how hard big props are. Like, they're not, they're not like centres and outside backs that you can kind of just bring in and, and all good. Like, these are props, key parts of the... He's also a... Sta he was started for New South Wales as started, well. Started, and they beat Queensland as well, didn't yeah. they? So that's, that's the concern for me. On top of that, he's a local junior. <laughs> Which for Newcastle fans matters so much And so it should Whenever they've been successful It's been because of local juniors mm. But now you have a look th through the side now And over the last probably 10 years And how many how, how many local juniors are dominating at other clubs mm. It's crazy Well even their, their local side now SG Ball or whatever Aren't they like gun? They're, yeah and they're, they're all local juniors yeah. There's only one or two kids that have yeah. come from elsewhere And you know I was at that game at the weekend I could hear Newcastle people like pretty much saying mm. Which Sydney back row are they going to trade this kid for? 
Like, like that's the attitude up there because they're so used to it happening over the last few years. Mm. I will say, you know, Peter Parr is a good, a good get. I, I think Very that he's going to be quite strong for them. And in, in a, in a, I think we're going to see a lot of direction going forward from him. But I do think this specifically, it, it isn't like, I don't know, like, for example, could you, could you see Penrith doing this three or four years ago before they became incredible? Or do you think Penrith would have been like, no, we have a plan and that plan is this youth and we're going to win a comp in four or five years. And it's easy for me to say that now because they won yeah. the comp, guys. I'm not, I'm not pretending like I'm some fucking Notre Dame at all, but I'm just <laughs> saying like, I don't, you know. Yeah, I, I know. You know what, what I'm saying? saying? Yes, yeah, so I know exactly what you're saying. And yeah, I mean, and obviously, once again, we are looking at Penrith after they've done it all yeah. and been successful and everything. But yeah, it does... But I just I can't believe the amount of messages I've got from Newcastle people saying what the fuck, mm. even though they are desperate for a fullback, but they've seen this kid and they, it just blows them away that they've let him go. And I mean, like they're front row stocks. They've got the um, Saifidi boys. I've got a lot of question marks around the rest of them too. So it's not like front row forward is a spot where fuck we got too many guys. It doesn't matter anyway. Well, well, are the Saifidi brothers in the category yet of like you know you're going to get a great year? We, yeah. we know how they've had great years, but are they in the category of like, you basically like, for example, Fisher Harris, like, you know, you're getting a good fucking year out of Fisher Harris. Um, now I think this, I do think the Cy Fiddy brothers will step up and be, step up and become that. Um, but yeah. But they're, they're definitely not. Like, I think that's my biggest thing with the, the decides Newcastle season is KP staying conscious, but then these two, they need to go to another level. Mm. They, they, they really to. do. They, they really, really do. Timmy, what do you reckon about the trade? Yeah, look, I don't love it. I think it's very probably short-term thinking, a short-term solution. I touched on my concerns on it last week around Adam O'Brien and needing wins straight away to, you know, to really to probably keep his job long-term. Mm. So, where, you know, whether that's come into it, I, I don't know. Maybe it hasn't. But I just think, realistically, the Newcastle Knights aren't in a premiership window at the <coughs> moment. Mm. You know, I think best case, they probably scrape into the eight this year. Barring KP going nuts, which is possible because he's so good. Yeah. Like, I think that's probably the ceiling this year. Um, so I just think you've got to be looking a little bit more down the track with young Bradbury. or All these raps coming out around him that he's just going to be, you know, he's a long-term prospect for them. So I th I'm – and the other part to it is that – and I'm speaking without doing too much research on this one, but there's got to be – a handful of Lockie Millers out in the market that they could have got on similar value without having to lose a local junior, couldn't they? Like, oh, across the whole of the NRL. Like New South Wales Cup, Q South Cup. Cup. There's, there's got to be a few Lockie Millers. Third string fullback to an NRL club, essentially last season, there's got to be a few out there. Yeah. Like, did it have to cost them Bradbury? But yeah, I, I, I look, I, I think, I, th I actually think Lockie Miller's going to be good. I actually do think he's going to be good, but you're right, like, to cost... An under 19 starting prop for New South Wales. I love your call of there's every chance he's top five running meters in the NRL this year. Mm. Definitely could be. Yeah, for sure. That does not translate to results, though. No, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Um, the flip side of this, what a win for the Sharkies. The Sharkies are sitting there going, you know, and, and this is, I'm not, no disrespect for Lockie Miller, but you're right. He was the third string um, fullback. Me personally, I actually had him in front of Dykes. Um, I actually had Miller in front of Dykes and I thought Miller was going to put pressure on Kennedy this year. But anyway, <coughs> aside, that, that aside, it seemed like the Sharks had him um, behind Dykes. Now, it's, it's a massive win for the Sharks long term, but literally the day after he gets signed, Dykes does his ACL. So, so we'll talk about the win later. Let's talk about, is that a concern for the Sharks? I think it was... A few hours later, actually. <laughs> and in answer to all the comments for the last two months, why won't Cronulla just let him go? That's why. Because oh. this shit happens in the NRL. Is it a concern for Sharkies if Kennedy gets injured? or Because he did miss, what, eight games last year? Not, not any of his fault, but, you know. Yeah, yeah no, it's a concern because, I mean, they don't really have an out-and-out -out one ready to come into that spot. I mean, unless you want to move Hines, which I wouldn't be. Maybe Mulatalo could get back there. I reckon Mulatalo would be the first one to put his hand up. Yeah, and yeah. I, I reckon he'd be okay there. They've also got young um, young Iroh, who can play fullback, yeah. I believe, yep. who's shown a bit of promise. But um, for a team that is trying to win a comp, to go from having three fullbacks to one mm. overnight, not ideal. Devastating. Devastating. 
And but no one, you can't blame the Sharks for this. As if they were going to like, how could they predict? Yeah. That this would happen. And it's funny, you know, I, I mentioned a few weeks ago, but they also had, you know, the young gun fullback in the grades, uh, um, Chevy Stewart, who went to the Raiders. He played his first game for the Raiders on the weekend and scored four tries, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Chevy Stewart, one of the great names. Chevy one of the Stewart. unreal names, yeah. Fucking great name. And in, in, in the Raiders' first grade trial or? No, no, in their SG ball, ball game on the weekend. But he, he's know. a very, very talented kid. Also, you can't blame the Sharks because how can you deny someone who was on their last year of a contract who's going to play reserve grade at best, a three-year deal to play NRL somewhere else. Yeah. It'd be so rough. Yeah. Didn't, so, so really, really unfortunate. Hopefully, you know, Dykes get, get, gets through this and we see him next year really good. But the positive is... And they, just, just to interrupt you quickly, sorry. on top of that, remember they let Metcalf go. Yeah. Fuck. So it's, it's essentially this time last year they were looking at it going, okay, we've got Kennedy, we've got Dykes, we've got Miller, we've got Metcalf. We're shitting fullbacks out of our yeah, ass at yeah. the moment. Now we've got one. Do they need to go on the market? They're pretty sure. I'm just going through all <laughs> yeah. the options now. There's not like Connor Tracy's played there before. Maybe but, Connor Tracy could fill a hole. Like Mooley Taylor wouldn't fill me with confidence at all. Um, ball running wise, he'd be great, but ball playing, I'm not sure about. Mm. Yeah, Connor Tracy maybe. I think he could. Do oh, a I job. think he could handle himself there. But once again, you're a team trying to win a comp. Yeah, not you're not building, just trying to make something. the eight. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the thing is, immediately you just start getting. Um, reps under his belt from preseason. Now that Dykes is gone, you just get Tracy playing a lot of fullback yeah. in preseason because he's so versatile, kind of oh, Tracy. Mate. Like and we know he can ball play. Yeah, we know he can ball play. Yeah. So I, I think he's probably an option. Um, mm. And that said, like I know it's not a lot of time, but you get at least this next month into him playing fullback. Um, hopefully, you know, Will Kennedy stays fit the whole season. It's not yeah. an issue. But uh, you know, another month or so throughout the season. He's done it before. So. Every time Will Kennedy runs a ball, you're going to be going. You go, they should have a cam on Fitzgibbon's face every time he runs a ball and it'll just be like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Can I, can I throw a hypothetical at you? Would you have rather the Knights do what they've done or would you have rather them just play Kurt Mann at one? I would have kept I, – I, I would not have swapped Bradbury for – So would you have kept Bradbury and play Kurt Mann at one yeah. potentially over there? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, th I think Kurt Mann, like, if you just said, mate, fullback's your role, he's going to get you th at least 175, 200 metres a game, fair few tackle breaks, decent ball player. It, yes, Lockie Miller is a step up, for sure, but not so far a step up. Um, oh, man, who's calling me at this fucking hour? How <laughs> dare you, sir? How don't they know, Kemp? No, they should fucking know. <laughs> calling me mother. It's a random number, too. Um it's the Daily Telegraph, they've... Uh, oh, they heard about the arrest. <laughs> <laughs> they've come for their story. Oh, no, I'm getting cancelled. Shit. <laughs> Get arrested outside of Callum Vale Hotel in 2010. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, how am I going to tell my parents? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> At least I go home and the missus be like, I'm a fucking bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, I would have, I wouldn't have, I would. Bradbury is too big of a loss in the front row position. We know how hard they had to come by. I think I would have kept him, but from Sharky's perspective, putting aside the Dykes injury, which they could not have handled or helped, what an incredible win for the Sharkies. Mm. Their forward pack already has all these guys. Think, think of how much he's managed to get out of guys that like these are. And this, again, no disrespect to the players, but a lot of their forward pack is throwaways from other clubs. Clubs that, you know, yeah. they guys that just couldn't make it or or guys that weren't given a fair opportunity. You give He's given these guys a fair opportunity, a good training program and belief. And look what they've turned into. That, they've lost for Fida and Tolman and their only two signings this year now are an under-19s New South Wales prop and then a former under-20s New South Wales prop, Oregon Kafusi. Wow. I mean, that's that's great. That's a great um, – in the market, like for a team, to, you go out and you get these guys that aren't going to break the bank, but uh, probably, you know, we don't know what Bradbury's going to turn out to be. We know Kafusi can play fucking well. Um, thoughts on them getting Bradbury? Yeah, I, I think it's good to get for them. I, you know, I'm not sure if I see him in their side at any point this year, potentially next year, I guess. I'm, I'm more talking like – the, the long term. Oh yeah, no, I, I I think it's a great game. And look, I, I haven't really seen him play to be honest with you, mm. but it's not very often you get a guy that <clears throat> I haven't heard of that people are going berserk about him leaving. So mm. I think it's a, I think it's a good get for them and for what they've 
given away. Obviously, it hasn't played out perfectly for Dykes, but you know, potentially their second choice fullback or their third choice fullback, who's twenty eight years old. I, I think it's a win for Cronulla. Timmy, yeah, huge win. Um, it, it all adds up for the Sharkies. I just. I, again, I haven't seen much of Bradbury either, so I'm really looking forward to seeing him play now. I can't yeah, wait for these know. trials. So. Absolutely. Um, now, guys, Cronin's Liquor in Jerringong and the Lake Illawarra Hotel Bottom Mart are both giving away a bloke shirt with a case of beer. So you buy a case of beer and you get a bloke shirt. Limited amount, though, guys. So if you head in there, you grab a case of beer, you get a bloke shirt, but once all the bloke shirts are gone, they're gone. So head into... Cronin's Liquor in Jerringong and Lake Illawarra Hotel in Bottle Mart. And uh, yeah, grab a case of beer. You get a free bloody shirt. A free bloody shirt. That's Jerringong, Jerringong Cronin's Liquor, and that's Lake Illawarra Hotel. Both Bottle Marts. Um, I think, no, sorry. Cronin's Liquor is not a Bottle Mart. Anyway, Cronin's Liquor in Jerringong, Lake Illawarra Hotel, Bottle Mart, giving away a bloke shirt. That's get the, in there, grab a case. That's the great Mick Cronin, Kempi. It, it is. Sure I've is. been there. Yeah. I went down and visited. One of the, it's a great little store. Uh, must have been excited to get the, the bloke in there. Mate, absolutely. Oh. It was. Uh, so we Loyalty. went down there, did <laughs> did a taste testing, and then their store is like literally like the footy field is like right there, oh. right across, across the road. The road. Yeah. Um, so, mate, head in there, Cronin's Liquor, former footy player, and you get a free bloke shirt or Lake Illawarra Hotel, giving away a free bloke shirt. Now it's time for the trials. Uh, we've got Thursday, 6 p.m., Warriors versus Tigers in Auckland. And don't forget, guys, in Queensland right now, all liquor legends, you spend $30 on anything you want in there, you get a case of bloke midi, sorry, a six-pack of bloke midi for 10 bucks. So spend 30 bucks, you get a six-pack of midi for $10. Plus, every liquor legends in New South Wales has the lager currently discounted. This goes till February the 21st. Now let's get into, what do we want to see in the Warriors Tigers trials, boys? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, all, all we're talking about here will, will be over the next two weeks, uh, what we're keeping an eye on. But that Warriors side, <laughs> I, I reckon these are the two hardest teams to make a best 17 for. Because these two sides, there's so many new players arriving at both clubs. There's so many versatile guys in both these sides. I honestly reckon you, you can lock in about six spots in either of this team. The rest of them, it, it's completely up for grabs, I think. And I wonder, I don't think it's getting enough attention. Warriors have a new coach. Yep. Like, it's not even being spoken about. Like, he's a rookie coach. We don't know how he's going to go. You know, he's part of the parent system, so we know he, we know he knows quality and has, has been a part of quality. Can he create that quality at, at New Zealand side? Yeah, and, I mean, even for the West Tigers, the reality is Tim Sheen's as much of a great coach as he's been. He hasn't coached here in a long time, too, so... Two very interesting teams, two very interesting um, storylines with both these sides. It looks like John Bateman's still not going to be here for the Tigers either. He's arriving next week, I believe it is. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it still remains to be seen what position he's going to play. He's going to have a rookie, young centre outside him. You're going to have to build a combination there, a 5-8 that he's never played with. And that's if he's playing on the back row. If he's playing at lock, which is rumoured, mm. it gets even more interesting. Absolutely. So what position-wise are you looking at for both of these teams that – Real focus for the trials. I think for the Warriors, I think the centres are going to be really interesting. Mm. Uh, I think that was a lot of their problems last year, that they were just leaking points left, right and centre in the centres. Uh, they've signed Murata Neokore, they've signed Chance, two guys that personally I'd be playing at centre just because I think that they can plug a hole there. I'd be going with Metcalf at one uh, tomorrow you Martin. love a bit of Metcalf, don't I, you? I think he's so underrated. Yeah, and I, I just think that they, that they need to sort out um, their outside backs because... If, if you show up with the with the young guys they showed up with last year, you're right, your game plan for opposition. I, I know sometimes you've just got to go with the eye test and who you back as a footballer and what you've seen. But does it not concern you that he was the fourth string fullback at the Sharks? No. No. Not really. Cody Walker was fourth and fifth string somewhere a few years ago. Like mm. you you go off what you see. Nico yeah. Hines is exactly the same. Uh he, he bit Nico Hines was few behind qu- Scott Drinkwater, but he Every sure, minute. but he was at Manly before that, and they were playing under twenties, and they, they let him go because they yeah. didn't want him. Yeah, like no, yeah. fair. I, I, I just think that guys don't get opportunity sometimes, and I also think part of the reason why Metcalf was the fourth choice fullback was because he'd signed with the Warriors. Yeah, okay. So that, that's I'm, fair share. doesn't concern me in the slightest. Mm. I'm somewhere in the middle because, like, you know, Metcalf's been around the block for a, a, quite a while now. What four or five years mm. since we've seen him explode at the Nines tournament over in Perth, was it? Um, and so it's like. Oh, man, you'd, you'd think you would have fought your way into some first-grade footy before now. But 
I also agree with you, Guru. Sometimes people just need an opportunity. Yep. They just need a fair, good opportunity and a coach going, you are the guy for us. Now, I'm not sure whether that's going to happen. Um, me personally, I'd probably have Metcalf at fullback. Um, but my, my biggest focus for the Warriors specifically, it's really their spine and how that's going to come together. Yep. You know, I just... I don't, we don't even know who's going to be six. They've got Tamade Mann, they've got Volkman, they've got obviously Metcalf. Um, oh, who's the other guy they've got that can play six? Volkman. I said Volkman, Volkman, yeah. Um, then you've got SJ in seven. You know, if SJ is injured, then, you know, who do they have that goes in seven? Then also who's going to play lock for them? Is it going to be Tohu Harris or is he in the front row now? Um, or is it Tavanga? Uh, it's just Josh Curran, a yeah. lot of options. Egan, Wade Egan uh, at nine. Look, I think he's a good serviceable hooker. I do think he probably needs to take another step up this year um, playing at nine. So my, my biggest focus will be, are we going to see new systems being implemented by the coach? Now, the coach may all preseason, he may have been like drilling into these guys. These are the new systems. This is where we're going to get to. This is the way we're going to play. But it all means nothing if the spine doesn't execute his systems. And so it's going to be interesting. Are we going to see a new look Warriors? You know, are they going to play similar to Penrith? Like, remember when Storm had all their success? Well, they still do. And like pretty much every club that was outside the eight just said, you know what? We're going to copy the Storm. We're going to try and play like the Storm. But they weren't the Storm. And so um, that's my main focus is, is the spine and the structure of their rugby league. What about you, Timmy, for the Warriors? Yeah, the first of many spine watching watches in the preseason. Lucky Metcalf's New South Wales Cup stats unreal, hey. Yeah. So twenty six appearances, twenty three <laughs> tries. Last season he had fourteen tries in thirteen games playing in the halves. Yeah, well. Really, really good numbers. Mm. Um, just that makeup of that spine. I think we. The word is it sounds like Charles will be at fullback. Um, we haven't seen a lot of him in the top grade in the last couple of years for a few reasons, but just to see how it lines up, you know, how fit is SJ. Sure, he looked good in that photo where Holy it was absolutely ripped. Holy shit. Um, that's all good and well. But, you know, how does SJ come out? How does this spine click together? No matter who runs out, it is completely new new look. So it is going to take time. Mm. Um, yeah, so, mate, it's all, it's all spine watch for me. Yep, for sure. Uh, Tigers. Tigers for me, not necessarily spine because you've got Brooks, you've got Dewey, Laurie, if they play, obviously. But I think that their spine is regardless of how they play, it's settled. Like, we know what it's going to be. Coruscant, Dewey, Brooks, and Laurie. Staines, apparently, like, from what I've read, I think Sheens has kind of said that just vocally he doesn't talk enough yet to be fullback because there were whispers for a period there that Staines was going to get the jump on Laurie. Well, I think that was the original idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, which is like, fuck, it's been such a... Like, one of your better players for the last couple of years and he just already... Anyway. Um, for the Tigers, it's just more about, like, the unity of the team because... They've got the cattle now. There's no, there's no one that can really sit there and say this team doesn't have the talent to make finals footy. Now it is like, uh, like are we going to see this a real buy-in from everyone in the squad, regardless of if it's because it's, um, obviously it won't be their starting seventeen. It'll be a few first graders with Q Cup and New South Wales Cup players. Are we going to see a real buy-in to a style of footy? That's what I want to see. What about you, Guru Tigers? Yeah, there's a couple of young guys there I'm excited for, like Sean Bloor, for example. I think yeah, Sean sure. Bloor and Matt Amua. Now, if, it, depending on where Bateman plays, if he plays on the edge, Sean Bloor won't be in the starting side. If he plays 13, it probably makes it tough for Matt Amua. They could also just go Joe off and Gowie through at 13 and just play power through the middle, which when you've got Happy Curacao, I can understand. Um, I also, I'm also very keen to see... That other front row spot, you've got Stefano, you've got Bole, all these guys. Who's going to be the guy to step up and go, I want to, I, I want to run out with David Clemmer up front there, mm. which I'm hoping Stefano, you know, came out, exploded, peeled off a little bit last year. Hopefully this can be the year again uh, where he picks up. So Stefano's one that I'll be watching. Oh, very, Stefano's very huge. Mm. He honestly, he could be season changing for them. Because if he, be, if he becomes a player we know he can with Clemmer, all of a sudden... You know, Luke Brooks has a forward pack that can bend the line, that he can work behind. I think the other one that I, I'm very keen to watch is Tommy Talao. He was injured mm. last year. He comes back into this side. I, I like the Tigers squad they've put together, but they're very light and inexperienced in their centres. Mm. I think they need one guy to really jump out of the ground, and I think Tommy Talao could be that guy. Star well, Tull is another one too. Well, Talao had massive raps coming out. Raps. Like, absolutely huge. And he came out, played well 
played well, but probably didn't reach the heights I think that was expected of him. And so you're right. Like I think this is a real year for Tommy to show everyone just how good he is. And if he, I'm expecting him to land at left centre, so he could be in a good little spot there with Brooks, Isaiah Papali, and him. Yeah. So hopefully th- th- this can be the making of Tommy Talao. Timmy, Timmy's Tigers. Timmy's Tigers, I reckon, mate. Jesus. Um, oh, Matt Amul's an interesting one. As you said, Guru, just could he be the solution to their, their ball playing lock question marks? This year, maybe not, but just uh, I want to see how he goes and more than anything, how he passes a football because it's such a big thing these mm. days. Um, Luke Brooks and Isaiah Papali, probably more likely for the second trial, but we don't know what team will, will run out in the first one. What can Isaiah Papali do for Luke Brooks? Mm. He's such a damaging, good, hard yeah. line running back rower. It's just going to, it should give Luke Brooks so much confidence in his game that he's got IPAP inside and outside him. It's, I'm hoping it opens up his running game mm. because when IPAP's running these hard lines and attracting defenders and they're just holding off on Brooks, that show and go should come to the fore. Mm. I, I don't think there'd be too many excuses why it can't. You've got Appy drawing blokes in on the inside of him and dishing good service. You've got IPAP holding on the outside. Good spot to be for Luke Brooks. Yeah. This is the year. We've said oh. it for a long time, but we need to see something because the Tigers have put this great squad together. But if he's not leading the show and getting this gun side around the park, then it'll be all for nothing. So oh, yeah. that combination is the one that I, I can't wait to see. Um, now, we've got uh, Friday, 5.55pm. Uh, and don't forget, guys, Bloke Country Tour, powered by Ringers Western. For the first week of the NRL season, we will be touring the country. Exciting times, I know. Exciting times. We cannot wait. So the places that we'll be going, Armadale, Wagga, Cairns and Rockhampton. We may add more dates. You know, I guess it all just depends on due to the interest. Um, at this stage, also, it's going to be free, guys. So you just come down and watch and watch a live show. So that is for the first uh, month of the NRL season, and it's powered by Ringers Western. Head over to at Ringers Western. Check out their merch. It's incredible. They're a huge company. They're all about the country. Uh, so that is the first month of the NRL season. Bloke Country Tour powered by Ringers Western. Now, next game, Friday, 5.55 p.m. This is all New South Wales time. Knights versus Sharks in Gosford. What do we want to see from the Knights here, boys? Yeah, Newcastle Knights, obviously the spine. We know who it's going to be. We, we want to see how they gel together. Similar to the, to the Tigers, mate, I want to know who's going to be the third front row forward with the Saifidi boys. You've got your two starters there. Who's going to be the first man to come off the bench, which, you know, they've got your Leo Thompsons, <coughs> these sort of guys. Um, there's a heap of guys that could fill that role, but I'm keen to see which one of them really step up. You've got... Um, I think most of the back line sort of picks itself. I think Dominic Young will be on one wing. The other wing, you've got, you know, Tuala, your Heimel Hunts, these sort of guys, a few guys that could maybe jostle for that other wing spot. But, yeah, for me, I think it's the forward pack that I want to see. Mm. Timmy? Uh, yeah, once again, I want to see if Lockie Miller knows how to pass a ball, to what extent. I mean, all my question marks are around, and all of us is KP at 5'8". I don't suspect we're going to see him in the preseason trials. No. So... All the questions I've got, I don't think are going to be answered until round one yeah. because of that. Mm. So, <laughs> I don't know. It almost writes off the nights in the trials for me, just in the sense that mm. it's all around KP. Well, so that's that's what my my reasoning for what, what I'm focusing on. It's last year when I watched the night sometimes, like I just didn't get the sense that like they, some of their energy in that forward pack, it just wasn't. Like sometimes you watch like the top tier, like for example, sometimes you'd watch the Roosters and your mouth would be hanging open going, like these guys are maniacs, mm. like actually crazy. Rabbitohs at times, like their line speed. Um, Penrith, they're just clinical. They refuse to fucking stop. Whereas I looked at the Knights and I just didn't see like a lot of zest and energy and blokes shooting up and line speed. So the thing is, is like, yes, it all hinders around KP their season. There's no denying that, but it all starts with the forward pack. And so what I want to see in this, this um, you know, uh, first trial is I just want to see a unified forward pack. You know, they're running lead lines with each other. They're not just taking one out hit ups. They're working off the ball for each other. Just to, I want to see them gel and see like, are they all heading in the same direction? Or is it a matter of your hit up, then my hit up, your hit up, then my hit up. I want to hit my stats, rah, rah. I want to see a, a united front when it comes to the forward pack. Um, what about the Sharkies? What do you want to see here? Tough team, the Sharks. Like, I mm. think they're the one team that I'd be confident I'm going to name their 1-17 to 17 and get it pretty much spot on. But, yeah. um, you know, they're, they're, obviously we've spoken about their depth. 
I guess Bradbury's one that I'm keen to see. Fucking oath. Keen to see him go around. Um, you oh, know, he'll be playing the Knights as well. That's crazy. Yeah, how good's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you, if he, can you oh, imagine if he God. rips? No. No, surely not. The, the rugby league gods couldn't be so cruel. <laughs> couldn't be so cruel. So perfect, isn't it? Fuck. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they've obviously, their they're jet side, their reserve grade team, a lot of very talented guys down there. I'm always keen to see this dummy half go around again. Mm. That I, I think is very, very slept on. So, Sharks, um, Beryl, Beryl Jaden yeah. Beryl. So, I, I don't think we'll see any big changes to the Sharks' best 17. Um, the other one that I do want to see, is, as I mentioned before, is that Iroh. Mm. It'll be interesting to see who they actually name at fullback for this game. Yeah, for sure. It might give it a bit of a tip off as to who they're mm. going to have as a backup. Mm. Uh, Sharkies, what I want to see is is that, okay, so we saw their Newtown side from, what, three years ago or two years ago, whatever it was, yep. graduate into first grade. And so sometimes what can happen is, is you can have this good bunch of young players come into first grade and it's almost a stroke of luck. And so what I want to see now from the Sharkies is, is the next batch just as promising as the current batch because if it's not and then people start plucking and tri like signing players from the sharkies all of a sudden it falls apart quite quickly whereas if we come out to the sharkies and we go oh you know they've got this player this player this player in their top squad then you go they really do have a good solid foundation not just for a two to three year premiership window but for a five to ten or whatever year what about you timmy with the sharkies yeah as guru said i think it's one to 17 pretty well picks itself, or at least one to 13. Uh, the who plays fullback when Will Kendi's off the field, mm. that's all of a sudden a really big watch yeah. for us. Uh, and then probably just Teague Wilton. I just I just wonder if he might sneak into a starting role this year. You know, does he start in the trials? Does Wade Graham transition to, to more of a bench role yeah. or a middle role to allow Teague to come in? Because I think he's a really, really good talent, Teague Wilton. And uh, I think we spoke about it sort of in depth before, but I think he suits that left edge for the Sharkies. So they're probably the big ones for me in a side that otherwise is, is pretty, as I said, picks, picks itself. Mm. Oh, Seaford Talakai. Yeah. That uh, just with a full preseason at centre behind him, probably shredded a couple. Just see if Seaford's that little bit more nimble. And Do you reckon they'll play him well. just a, not 20 minutes? In the trials in general? In this week? I don't know how... To, I don't know how they're going to go about if like sides are thinking, do we get the big trial out in week two or week one? I mm. don't know how they're going to go about it. Um, now, we've got Friday, 8 p.m., Rabbitohs v Manly in Gosford. Uh, what do we want to see out of the Rabbitohs? What do I want to see out of the Rabbitohs? Uh, this, is a, this is an interesting one. I, I, I guess it's that, that centre role, like is Tass going to play? And if he is, you know, what's the depth like there? Um, I guess I, I want to see the fullback, who they've put there at fullback. Is it going to be Blake Taff? Is he? He's still the, the rabbit, isn't he's he? Still, yeah, and apparently he's a good chance to be the 14. Yeah, mm. so I, I want to be interested to see who they play fullback because as we know, like the troll, um, even though he's been unlucky, but if he gets injured, like it's not just losing a normal fullback, you basically lose your chance to win a comp because he's that bloody yeah. good. I know they made the grand final, but we saw last year when he came back, they, they completely changed as a team. Um, so I'm really interested to see who plays fullback. And then also just kind of like the fringes of their forward pack. You know, you've got Burgess, who's coming off contract this year. Then you've got um, Totola, who is an uh, out-and-out starter now. And so with Burgess coming off contract, I do think that his first 10 weeks is going to really dictate, like if a young fella is sitting on the bench and he explodes and kills in the trials, it may dictate the, the asking price that Burgess can ask, even though I think Burgess is... Honestly, so outstanding. So that's what I'm looking for, the Rabbitohs. What about you, Guru? Should be noted, too, if you are in the Gosford area, this is a um, double header. these two games. Yeah, so you, good. you get out to two games of footy there, which would be great. I agree with you, Blake Taft. I think he'll be interesting. I also think that wing spot, you've got Isaac Thompson, you've got Richie Kenner. Tane Milne's going to be out for the first few weeks, so someone definitely gets an opportunity. I actually think Tane can play in this game. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure he can. So Could you imagine if he gets I reckon they'll soon? start to shift Tane into the middle a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come well, off the Well, he was good for Fiji in he the middle. He was great for Fiji. Yeah. And if he wouldn't have had that brain explosion for Souths, I think he would have played in the middle for Fiji. And we'd be talking about him more as a middle. But yeah, mm -hmm. Isaac Thompson, his second year back. And I'm here, I've heard that Richie Kennard's having a great preseason okay. as well. So And yeah, a couple of forwards. You, apparently your, your mate's going well, Benny Lovett. So your mate? My mate? Yeah. No? I'm guessing by Maddie's gasp that it's probably Maddie's mate. You know about... Uh, he's not my mate, but I, I know a bit about him. He's I've obviously South have one of the strongest kind of back rows in the competition with Colmatungi, Arrow and Murray, but 
that's his position. So he's obviously not going to crack that. But he's a young. Up Actually, and didn't Jai? We had Jai on the podcast. Didn't he say Love It is Actually, a real? Yeah, I think Love It was one of the guys that Jai said, said. Who's? Yeah, we said to Jai, who's one young fellow that you really rate? And he said, he said Love It and Talis Duncan. Which one did he say fucking loves to get right amongst it? Love it. Love, love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So Jai was like, and Love It. He Love It loves it. Love Jai's It loves mate. it. And Jai said, I love the fact that he fucking loves it. And the other name you mentioned there, um, Talis Duncan. They signed him from the Roosters a couple of years ago. Big hitter, bit of a maniac. Yeah, okay. He's one that could come in and do really well. He plays, um, he plays in the middle as well. So yeah. he, it'd be interesting to watch him go around. The other one that I, I think this could be the year that he really kicks on is uh, Mawali. I think they okay. just eased him in year on year. Uh, and yeah, they, they, they've got a couple of young guys. Like there's um, Kalo Kalo, who we haven't seen yet. He's very talented. I think... I think he, he, Keep an eye on him in the trials. He's a yeah. he's a back. He plays fullback. He can play. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see because South obviously don't have a lot of depth in those a uh, couple of those back positions. So yeah, he'll be an interesting one. And there's another kid there, Munro, that I mentioned a few weeks ago. He's been he's played she ball the last few weeks. I, I reckon he'll play in this game, and I think he could play first grade this year. Yeah, well. He's a he's like he's in that very GI sort of mold. Oh, big, really? Tall, big rangy, rangy body. Fuck yeah. Mate, how good. Munro, one to watch there for sure. Timmy, who are you looking for? Or what are you looking for with the Rabbitohs? Yeah, I mean, this trial, obviously, with the, the Charity Shield in week two, that'll be where they roll out the better sides, or probably South Sydney in particular. But uh, probably just Lockie Elias for mm. me. Uh, hopefully he can, you know, shed the curse of second-year syndrome. You know, we, we know the importance of Latrell, Cody, Damien Cook to this team, Cam Murray, but, you know, if we're talking about a premiership force, Lockie Elias came in and... Boy, you would have learned a lot about uh, professional oh. NRL, professional rugby league last season. So, how he's come out of that and what he's taken from year one in the NRL, how good can he be? And can he take that next step up to go, all right, Penrith, we're done with you, mate. We'll tell you up in the preliminary final this year. And Lockie is obviously such a key part. So, how has his game evolved in the last 12 months? Another full preseason with these blokes around him. Uh, big watch on him. Obviously, Latrell Mitchell and Cody Walker, they're going to be in the All-Stars camp. It'd be great to see them put um, Ilias out there with Mamas Ellis at nine mm. and have a look at the future without your yeah. Cooks, your Walkers, your maybe Latrells. Even, maybe even give Ilias a captaptaincy. I would. Game. I'd see how he goes. Mm. Yeah, so this is your team this weekend. Yeah, because like, he's who you want to be captain after Murray's gone. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, Manly, what do we want to see with Manly? I think we're all going to say the same thing. Who plays fullback? Uh, and Schuster. Yeah, Schuster's uh, the big watch for me. I'm very, I'm very interested to see how he goes on that edge. Obviously, and he's got yeah endless ability, but he's stepping into big shoes of Kieran. Well, it's Ford. the thing with Schuster is it's not even about the stats that he. It's not even about the stats that he puts up on the weekend. Like if he if he does play, I don't care whether he has <clears throat> zero try assists or five try assists. I just want to see what's his attitude like on the field. Like, and, and not to say that he's got a bad attitude on the field, but I want to see him in everything, talking constantly, heaps of energy, getting the ball in his hands all the time. That's all that matters to me. It's not the, oh, did he go out and you know, win man of the match? Not at all. It's like, is his energy just really, really high? What about you, Timmy? <laughs> it's just, it's all shoes to watch, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I think Gary could probably be the one to play fullback. When he, like, in well, terms cooler, of cooler, oh, might cooler, K. O. Weeks played a bit of fullback. Or yeah, K. O. Weeks debuted. But debut. I think Garrick's probably been so good at fullback that, in terms of if Tommy isn't available at all, then Ruben Garrick's the man for the number one. But geez, they've got good options, don't they? I want to see if Garrick plays centre or not. And so much Garrick's talk about center, it. Yeah. yeah. And well, I, I mean, think part of the when he's when he's, they announced that deal. Yeah. Like part of the the article said it was because they wanted him as a centre. But with, with Saab out until, what, round 10, do you reckon they can afford that? Well, so they've got Cooler definitely in one centre if he, want, like, if he plays there instead of fullback. Mm. And then the other centre, they've got Morgan Harper, Brad Parker. Brad they've Parker. got options. So they've got options there to, put, to throw in that centre. Then they've got that young fellow that they've got uh, Tui Pilotu, who's mm. a gun. Then they've got that other young fellow that came in on the wing last year and played really well. Mm. Um, That's what so I meant, though, like, because there's a wing spot like kind of gone for 10 weeks. Do you just put Garrick there because they've got some center options? As in put Garrick on the wing? Yeah. No, I'd, I'd be, if, if I'm going to play Garrick in center, I'd put him there immediately. Okay. To get him used to like playing as much footy at center as possible. If, if that's the direction they're going to go. The other one to watch with Manly is young Latu Fainu, who's yeah. an absolute star. He was named SG Ball the week and got pulled out last minute. So, so I'd put money play. on he's playing six this weekend with Cooper Johns probably. Oh, really? If you don't watch anyone else this weekend, watch this kid. I know. Yep. 
And so that's, again, that's a part of the Schuster watch because if Fainu comes out and kills it, and, he, and this kid is like, didn't he sign, he sign one of the biggest deals coming out of school? He's a freak. Like, he's we're, not, we're talking about Katoa-esque, as in hype, when it comes out of school. If he comes out and kills it, not only that him, you've got KO Weeks as well that can play six. Like, it's even though Schuster is absolutely the guy that you want to play six, it's not a done deal. Like, it really is not. If Latu would have moved clubs, we'd be talking about him as much as a Katoa. Mm. Carl that we spoke about last week, just because he stayed at Manly and there hasn't been much movement. He's an absolute freak. He'll be one to watch. And the other thing with Josh Schuster is moving to six will be interesting how he goes. That leaves that left edge back row spot open. Mm. And Andrew Davies gone now too. So someone's going to have to step into that role, whether it's Kelma, whether it's Bullimore. I don't know who it'll be, but I think that'll be an interesting position. They, they reckon Ben Condon's going really well down there as well. It's uh, with the, the Schuster, because he played so well at back row, it's almost a negative to him because as soon as he doesn't play incredible at six, yep. they're going to be a boom straight yeah. to the back row. Yeah, because it makes yeah. especially for obviously one of the replacements to kill it. The other one around the halves is with Josh Schuster in there, Daly Cherry Evans losing his partner in crime in Kieran Four and mm. like his role becomes he's going to get so many touches oh from this my team God. now because you know he's not going to be relying on Josh Schuster to get this side around the park or even his edge he'll, he'll do bits and pieces but it's going to take time for Josh Schuster to settle in this role so DCE you know you think Tom Draboy which is everything to this team well Daly Cherry Evans he has to have a big year yeah oh mate it's, it's going to be interesting to see because sometimes he can overplay his hand because he is so competitive but in this in the same sentence like for this season he kind of almost needs to overplay his hand because yeah. it's like what else they got Croker who's just a serviceable dummy half and, you know, it's, he's really improved and all that stuff, but he's not like a creative half, like I say, an happy. And then you've got Schuster, who is more the tip of the spear rather than the spear. So, yeah, especially if Tommy's out as well, like it's even more times DC yeah. is going to touch the ball. Um, okay, now on to Panthers versus Eels, Saturday 6 p.m. in Penrith. How do we uh, – what do we want to see from the Panthers? I, I think that me personally, it's life after – Kick out and Happy Coruscant, and so it's going to be like is Hoskins going to is Hoskins and um, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name now. The other guy from Garner. the Tigers, Garner, who who, not who starts because who starts is actually means he's probably down in the pecking order um, in regards to, but it's going to be interesting to see whether both of those guys play because then that means it's completely up in the air who can get that spot. I reckon there's a really good chance this weekend Penrith name. Very few guys that have played first grade because their week two game is the World Club Challenge. Mm. So I think they'll go all chips in there. I probably think you'll see Hoskins play this weekend. And I yep. think they'll save Garner for the weekend after, which, as you said, I think that'll be telling. But there's there's so many young guys that you'll see this weekend from the Penrith Panthers. Um, you know, Taruva, Jenkins. Um, you'll probably see like a Maverick Geyer. You'll see yeah, Eddie Blackers. These, like, there's a heap of really talented guys at Penrith. Matty Eisenhuth will start. Well, you're looking at the New South Wales Cup champs and. Aussie champs. Yeah, and you're, what, what you're doing is you're looking at the New South <coughs> Wales Cup champs who lost a heap of players to mm. other teams who are then filtering other guys from younger grades that are winning. Like, they're just all fucking winners. Well, you, we're basically looking at, so they won every grade last year, four, four of them. Yep. So you're looking at, like, arguably the highest quality reserve trial we've ever seen because they won four fucking things last year. I want to see where they use Tyron Peachy. I reckon he'll play this week potentially. Yeah, so I don't well, he'll be in the World Club Challenge. So interesting to see because you could play him anywhere in this team pretty much. I'm keen to see what Ivan Clear is considering mm. with him. Do you play Sonny Luke? Not this week. No, I'd be saving him. I think. Man, I, I, I'd be I'd be tempted to play Sonny Luke because the nine role is like I want as much minutes as possible mm. in tough games heading into round one, and like Mitch Kenny, although you know a good solid player. Is he going to be an 80-minute hooker for them? Probably not. And so I'd probably be playing Sonny this week. If Sonny was 21, I would, but he's 26 years old, a little bit older. And I think that's what a lot of people are forgetting with Luke. So I'd be confident just playing him next week. But mm. I understand where you're coming from, mm. for sure. Yeah, also the – I mean, it sounds like Mitch Kenny will play his – much like he did with Appy in the back end of last year, the word is that Mitch Kenny comes out, plays 20 to 25, yep. uh, and then Sonny Luke comes out and plays that 55-minute role straight. Yeah, I mean, you talk about getting those tough NRL-quality games in, into him, but I wonder how strong the Parramatta side is this week. Um, 
for this game. At the same time, I, I think they'll be saving him for the World Club Challenge. I'm so excited to see more so the World Club Challenge, mm. but just the dynamic of this Penrith outfit without Viliami Kikau. <coughs> uh, a traditionally very left side dominant team mm. with Garner, likely Garner coming in there. Nathan Cleary being more of a, obviously a right edge player. Does that right edge almost take over with Liam Martin as the, mm. the hard running back rower? Brian Toto is obviously on the right wing now when Taylor May's on deck. Mm. So we could see a really big shift in this side. And Nathan Cleary is such a huge watch because he now loses Appy and he has, say, Sonny Luke or Mitch Kenny there feeding him. Cleary could go to another level this season. Like he might not, might have to, but, you know, how does Ivan Cleary respond? to the new dynamic in his team, losing key players. You know, we know with Craig Bellamy over the years, he might win a premiership. He didn't need a poor season to change the structure of his team mm. because he was ahead of the game. Well, can Ivan Cleary do that? I'm sure he can. But in which ways does he change things leading into well, round one? It's interesting you say that because, so, you know, I was speaking to Cam Smith last year and I was like, mate, like what people, I mean, they're starting to come around now for sure. But I was like, what people don't understand is, is like you guys have, because you have such a reputation reputation for being like defensive, gritty, mm. never give an inch, just just a, almost vanilla style of rugby league, people don't actually realise ever since like 2018 or so, they've been one of the best attacking sides yeah. in the comp. And it's funny you say in regards to Bellamy is that, so you know when they changed the way they played? It wasn't a bad year, as you said. It was the year they lost to the Sharks by a bee's dick. Mm. He changed the, the, their entire system because they said, we no longer want to, I guess, be the grindy, gritty team that wins through the middle. We need to change the, everything the way we play. And that's what makes Bellamy one of the greatest of all time. It's like he loses the grand final by 10 seconds or whatever, and then he changes the entire style of play. A couple of years later, they break the record for the most points ever in season. And I understand there are circumstances that helped that, but it doesn't change the fact that out of all the teams in the comp, they smashed every team out of the water when it comes to points scored. And, and you're right, it's, it's a, analogous to Ivan Cleary. You came off winning a comp. Is it the time now to change the way you play? Because if you go back and watch Penrith over the last few years, any time they needed momentum, they just went shift, shift, kick out, boom, quick play the ball, and it just totally opened everything up for them. How do they, how do they get that same benefit off guys that aren't as big and as strong as kick out? Um, yes, yeah, so I totally agree, Tim. Just quietly, Allegus? Was that the word? Ana- analogous. Analogous. Yeah. Good word, Campy. I like Can that. You go- Google the definition just so yeah. I'll fucking hopefully I got it right. Sometimes you, you throw out these words and then you're like, sharp like this. <laughs> <laughs> analogous. I like, like that. Um, I think it's like for an analogy. Yeah, right. Here we go. Come on, Matty. Analogous. Comparable in certain respects, typically in a way which makes it clearer the nature of things compared. Oh, stop it. <laughs> stop it. That's real good from you. Fucking hell, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. You don't want to say that. for an ex-con. <laughs> <laughs> I read a lot of books in jail. Um, okay. Uh, eels. What do we want to see with the eels? Yeah, a few question marks over their side. Uh, Big fucking number nine. That's for yeah, me. Yeah. I, I don't know if we'll – I don't think we'll see Josh this week, but I think the week after we'll definitely – he'll be the well, one to watch. What yeah. I mean is, is number nine is because, like, Hodgson's old. He's come back from injury. Yep. What if he gets injured? Who's the next guy? Yeah, well, they, they, they've got Mitch Rain there. I don't know if Mitch is the answer respectfully mm-hmm. to him. So, hopefully there's another kid that can pop up there. Um You'll get Hopgood. He'll be playing in the All-Stars this weekend. So you get to watch him there as well. Him That'll be great. Uh, but yeah, Parramatta, they've got a few spots to fill. I think that that edge back row spot between your Murchies, your Dorries to replace IPAP, mm. that'll be very interesting and very important for this side. Maddo's out for the first three weeks as well. So you think about that, that bench, you know, they lose Maddo for the first three weeks. Kafusi's not going to be there. The Maddo out for the first three weeks is one of the great rugby oh. league yarns. One of the great rugby league yarns. <laughs> Oh, anyway, sorry, sorry, bro. That's I, fucking I, wild, that yeah. one, isn't it? It is the more. It's honestly one of the worst. Mm. Like, Maddo is a great guy. He's been on the podcast, nice guy, legend, whatever. But when I saw the news, I was like, bro, what thought process got you to t- to not just take the fine? What was it, three grand? Three uh, or four grand. Four, I, think I think it was four, four grand, grand. Yeah. yeah. Mate, look, God, look, I can be tight, mate. I can be tight. <laughs> I wear the same suit everywhere, but shit. 
They're not a suit, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, cost a bloody arm and leg. Custom made. <laughs> Suave Bespoke, one of the great suit makers. Um, <laughs> I'll wear the same suit to your wedding, bro. So. I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> we've actually, we've got, uh, we've got my wedding and then the next Sunday we've got another wedding and we're going on a cruise for the week and I was with the guys getting married on the weekend. He goes, oh, you can just wear your suit again. And I go, fuck, after a cruise, that suit ain't fitting me. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, Timmy, what do you want to see from the Eels? I think obviously all around Josh Hodgson in the number nine spot as well. Let's say... Hodgson does go down injured and they need to look at their backup hooker, whoever that may be. I don't think, to be honest, it matters as much as we think it will because of all teams, your role as a number nine at Parramatta is to give your star halves early service. Mm. They shift, they're one of the best teams in the competition at ball movement and big shifts between, you know, Ryan Madison's a great ball playing lot. Junior Bolo is a great ball playing front rower. Mm. They've got all these fellas who can do that. So if, you, if it ends up being Mitch Rain who goes out there and plays 65 minutes and tackles his ass off and just distributes and gives good service, that's fine. Mm. There are other clubs where, you know, you need a creative hooker to, to help out and be a playmaker for the team. But well, mainly, mainly you could argue is one. Uh, Lockie Croker is the first one that came to mind mm. when I was thinking about that. Is yeah. All he has to do is tackle his ass off and, and distribute. Mm. So I think Parramatta are fine either way, even if something was to happen to, to Josh Hodgson, who's obviously getting on a little bit. That being said... Josh Hodgson in there, um, how will he impact this team? Again, the dynamic of the team, does it change now they get a, like a really crafty playmaking hooker coming into the team? I suspect not. I suspect Josh Hodgson alters his role to what he did at Canberra, which again we've spoken about in <coughs> the previous podcast. But mm. uh, that's the big watch. And then Guru touched on it, but the right edge back rower. Mm. Who replaces uh, Isaiah Papali'i there? There's a few candidates that he rattled off and just it, it could be anyone mm. really. Um, do we think Jacob Arthur plays? Yeah, I think he'll play in this one. Yeah, I think I, I'm really interested to see um, their halves, like their halves coming through. Although Dylan Brown and Mitch Moses are, are quite young, relatively speaking, um, I, I want to see see their depth because I do feel like the Jacob Arthur situation. Um, you know, in the end, it was good to carry him on the bench. I, I guess um, he probably could have still done what he did without being carried on the bench, but it is a question. Uh, will they continue to do that? Will they continue to carry a guy that can essentially only play seven um, on the bench? And will he play even in this trial, even though he's played quite a bit of first grade now? Yeah. I, w- I want to see what the, what the feel is around that. And also, <laughs> sorry, um, Mitch Moses has not re-signed yet, has he? Not yet. So that, I'm not saying that like this hinges whether he's going to re-sign or not, but there may be some little subtle things in the trials where you could maybe – get the feeling where the Eels are confident they're going to re-sign him or whether they're not confident they're going to re-sign him. Um, what are you going to say, sorry, Guru? I was just going to say, uh, obviously, Assi's joined the club as well. Has he pulled out of the All-Star? Was he one of the ones that pulled out? Yeah, Assi's just joined. It's disappointing. I was yeah. to see him. Uh, so, yeah, Jake, uh, they, they, they've got a number of young halves that are in, like, the junior grades that mm. are very talented, as Parramatta always do. But uh, outside of Jake Arthur and Assi, if you want to count him as a ball player, there isn't anyone else in their top 30 that they could... Mm, Short ball into the halves, realistically. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, like, if Jake Arthur plays and captains decide for the trial, just just to see where he's standing in the club is. And I'm not I'm not going to get into the rhetoric of he's the coach's son, whatever. Like, I'm just talking about he is the next half after Mitch Moses. They haven't re-signed Mitch Moses yet. Um, I think they will, guys. So Eels fans, don't stress out. I think they definitely will re-sign him. Um, This talk about him going to Tigers, honestly. If he goes to the Tigers, it'll be one of the most shocking things I've ever witnessed in rugby league. Because, and like from a, from a transfer perspective, I cannot see a world where he would go back to the Tigers from a premiership. And like, I get, I get it's great for media in, the, in regards to, not, it's not the media's fault, but it's great for um, Mitchell Moses' market value to say that he's considering the Tigers because obviously they're offering him a mozza. But I, in, I can't see a world where Mitchell Moses leaves. I can't. Uh, you know, I, I keep reading the narrative. Oh, it'd be so good to see him go back to the Tigers and win. Would it not be good to see him win at fucking Parramatta? Oh, look what he's done unreal. at Para. Yeah. They yeah. went to a grand fight. Like Mitch Moses, three or four years ago, was so maligned. Like people were like, he's a sorg, he can't tell. Like there's so much negativity around him. He'd never done anything wrong. Like he, they, they were spoon essentially when he arrived. Now they're a powerhouse. Like I'm not saying it's just him, but I tell you what, he's the main guy on the rugby league field when they play every week. Yeah. 
Oh, so um, I think they resign. Mm. You get Teddy and Mitch Moses to go back to the Tigers. Yeah, yeah for sure. Then I'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just quickly with the, the Jacob Arthur on the bench again this season. I think now that Josh Hodgson's there, let's say they, they carry Mitch Rain as the 14 to play 15, 20 at hooker, whatever it might, might be. I think Hodgson, come, if he comes back well, they'll want him as an 80-minute nine. But at his age, coming off the injury, mm. you know, he could easily be a candidate as a 65-minute hooker. Hodgson can slide into the halves if Brown and Moses go down. True. Rain True. comes on at hooker. So I don't see any need for Jacob Arthur on the bench, mm. provided Josh Hodgson's fit. Yeah. True. Uh, okay, now Dragons versus St. Helens. We'll just talk about the Dragons. Uh, what do we want to see from the Dragons? Oh, man, this is a tough one. Where do we start? Yeah, I look, I just, you know what I want to see? I want to see, it's, it's going to sound stupid because I know they're a bit of an older side, but I want to see youthful energy. That's it. I don't care about, um, I want to see a, ga- a high pace game with a lot of line speed in defense and in attack. Just a bunch of energy. Uh, then I'll be, that that'll if if we see them come out and do that, that'll really ease my concerns about the the aging kind of forward pack and the and, and you know the forward pack. As anyone that listens to this podcast knows, I value experience extremely highly. Matter of fact, I think that experience is undervalued still. So I'm not sitting here saying that they don't offer um, a lot to the to the game when it comes to experience but it just just as a whole i just want to see a, a lot of energy a lot of line speed and then benny hunt can work out the rest mm. what do you want to see guru i was just thinking oh, we'll get to see these young guys we won't see any of them mo's mm. not going to be there but sullivan's yeah. injured yeah. sloan's gonna be playing for the all-stars so it'd be good to see him there but um and yeah i agree with you mate just to see some energy out of the dragons they just looked so flat last year didn't they they still managed to like challenge the eight for a bit which is like a credit to them. Yeah, cr- full, full credit to them. But I like you just want to see some energy out of this side. I, I'm hoping that they play. The one that I'm keen to see is how Jacob Little goes. Mm. I think playing against this England side, maybe they will put out a better strength side. I'd hope that they would. Um, Little's got a heap of potential. When he was coming through the grades, he was a prodigy. Yeah, well. Wow. Just injuries have just fucked him up time and time again. So uh, I'm not confident it's going to happen, but I really hope that he can turn his career around here. Mm. Timmy? Interesting to see what team they throw out, being, you know, playing against an English Super League club, a bit more hype than a, a general NRL trial, but then obviously the Charity Shield next week. So yeah. uh, maybe they send out two stronger sides. I'm not sure. Mm. To be honest, with the amount of changes and injuries and concerns over this team, they probably can't afford not to try and get a few combinations going in these two games. They're both probably pretty important for them. I want to see Tyrell Sloan across the All Stars game and the Charity Shield. I don't give a shit about what he does in attack. We know he can attack. I want yeah. to see him at the back barking orders, getting that defensive line set. I want to see his positioning for kicks good. I want to see his positioning in behind the, the line when they're defending their own line. I want to see him in the right place, cleaning up kicks in behind the line, all mm. that sort of stuff. As I said, we know he can attack and run the footy. Yeah. But we want to see him do the other stuff, and that's the key to him becoming a success at number one this season for the Dragons. Mm. Um, another little thing I'm looking forward is if, looking for is like we know they've got good youthful outside backs. What's their young forward pack like? What's their mm. guys that are 18 to 22 years old that are coming through? Because put it this way, if if they come out the Dragons, and I know it's only a trial, guys, I understand. But if they come out as a young side, because that's what will be, they'll be young, and and really impress, then Hook's almost vindicated because you go, oh, now I see the plan. All of your young guys are absolute yep. throbbers. And so I understand why you're not going into the market. And you're actually, you know, for what we said we didn't like about Newcastle's decision, you're actually taking the hard route of going, you know what, we're not going to the market for a big dog. We've got good guys coming through. Yes, we can't win a comp now, but we're hoping to win it in two to three years. And so, and it, look, it's only one trial, but I think we'll get a good feel of like, what is their youthful side how good is it? How, athletically, all that kind of stuff. And there are a couple of good forwards. You know, you've got the um, younger brother of Francis Molo, uh, Michael Molo, who's talented. Jaden Hunt's come through their grades. He's very good. Zane Musgrove joins the club too. Zane's always been able to find his way in, into trouble off the field or whatever it is. But fuck it. Like, he, he's a decent footballer. He's aggressive. He just needs to put it all yeah, together. No, yeah. So aggressive. He's hyper aggressive. And, and he's a guy that if he jumps out of the ground, all of a sudden this Dragons pack looks a little bit different. Mm. So uh, hopefully he can be the one. Um, Tyrell Fuimaiano, it looks like he might start on an edge. Okay. Another one that when he was younger looked like he was going to be a world beater. He's physically so imposing. Big so imposing. athletic body. So, 
Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Storm v the Roosters. It's 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 funny that like their first real trial, Storm and Roosters choose to play each other because like they're like we want we want to play the best of the best to get you ready. Yeah. Um, out of the Storm, what do we want to see? I really want to see the fringes because I felt like last year and we discussed it. When the fringes came in, unfortunately, the storm just weren't at that same level as yesteryear where the fringes would come in. And, and there's a reason for that. They lost their whole bench. You know, we spoke about it and we, we praised Storm so much, but they're essentially the only club that can have their bench be signed as marquee signings. No other club that I can think of right now would even come close to that. You got Tino, uh, you got Cheese, you got Nico. Like, that, that's incredible. Like, these are marquee signings for other clubs. They're on the bench for the Storm. But I think this this trial, I want to see their next generation. And one guy that I will be focused in on is Jack Haworth. There's one back row spot jersey that I want them to throw in the middle of these seven or eight, whether it's Haworth, Leroux, Chan. There's so many guys down there that could fill these roles. You've got, you know, the older heads like Tommy Eisenhuth. Mm. We, we, we've been saying, you know, um, super coach wise, it wouldn't shock us if we're talking about all these young guns for the next five weeks. And Bellamy goes, Eisenhuth, my back row. Yeah, yeah, Safe as houses. I sure. know what I'm going to get every single week. So there's there's got to be one or two Melbourne Storm back rowers, edge players, young guys that jump out this year and earn a spot. Yeah, Alec McDonald, these sort of guys. So I'd be playing all of them this week, all mm. those young guys. For Just sure. Saying, let's see who comes out on top. Agreed. Timmy? Mm. Yeah, sorry to sound like I'm just following you boys, but some of these teams, there are such obvious spots yeah. that you're watching for them when you go on last, which I'm more than happy to be. I, I love the role on this show. <laughs> let you boys rattle off the important stuff, then I just chime in at the end. <laughs> just pick it apart. It's, it's great. It's <laughs> great. Um, but the it's the edge back rowers, and they're just... Uh, what a transition from the last five, ten years of the same back rowers, Bromwich and Corfusi. The most consistent back rowers yeah. in the comp. Yeah. And now you've got this completely new look forward pack. Howth is the one that springs to mind as number one that we want to see. Uh, Elias Katoa is the other one. Yeah, the bloke wow. who. Do you reckon he plays this week? Surely. I think they'll probably want to get yeah. time into Elias Katoa. Surely. And, and just say, mate, what have you got? Win this, win this spot for round one because yeah. he's the one with the highest upside. Oh, like, mate. He has, he can be, has the, we've seen him be one of the most damaging edge back rolls in the game. Mm. Round one, he could be a starting 80-minute edge back rower or he could be coming off the bench in New Wales Cup or Queensland Cup yeah, for them. It's, it's so like, you don't know. So yeah. I can't wait to see what Bellamy has been able to do with him in a short amount of time. And I hope he unlocks him because he, he could he's such an exciting prospect in the game. Yeah, agreed. Now, what do we want to see from the Roosters? Me personally, I just want to see what type of footy do they <laughs> yeah. play? Uh, because I think that this will be a really good indication of, okay, yes, their stars aren't going to be playing for sure. But if we, if we watch the game and it's very through the middle, heavy, high paced, a lot of scoots, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think that is a, a tell that what we discussed last year with all these signings when it comes to Trent Robinson, where he wants to change the style of rugby league that he plays. A, a super high energy, some of the best ball runners ever in, in, your, in your back line. Uh, and so with the Roosters, I'm looking at them going, are we going to see remnants of that style of footy? And it's, is it going to be a, almost like a trailer for the first grade side uh, and how they're going to play? What do you want to see from the Roosters? I've got to go with my boy, Josh Wall. The big fella <laughs> on the edge. Is he, he's I, on the edge, isn't he? Yeah, he can, play, he can sort of play anywhere, yeah. but I, I think he'll play on the edge. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they let him sort of lead the team this week. Yeah, wow. And then um, come off the bench the week after. He played mad for Fiji in the World Cup. He's a gun, mate. Yeah. He's so ready. Like, And what you need to keep in mind, those games for Fiji, that was his first time ever playing against grown men. Yeah, wow. Well. Starting in the back row for so Fiji. So was he about 20? Yeah, he's, he's 19 or 20, but he's been one that's been impacted by this whole COVID yeah, okay. situation. Origin Bolter Guru. Smokey? I won't go that far. I won't go that <laughs> Give him three years. Yeah. Um, but also you've got guys like Corey Allen, Jackson Borlo. I, uh, I've found it really interesting the Roosters' recruitment of outside backs the last few years. They're <coughs> consistently signing guys that I didn't think they'd sign, mm. whether it be <coughs> Kevin Aguama, whether it be Gildart, Corey Allen, Paulo. Really interesting how they're going about that. And, you know, they are releasing a lot, a lot of those guys as they go along as well. But you would have to think that one of these guys, and it could be a, a Billy Smith as well, where they sort of fit. Yeah. I think I'm really interested to see Jackson Polo. Because, like... Momorowski's one of them as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, fuck. There was a period... Momorowski 
was in the grand final for the Storm that they won. He won two comps in a row. And then he went to the Pen yeah. Panthers. <laughs> like, it, it, it was bizarre because, like, at the end of like by the end of like last season, his defense just seemed to disintegrate. Like he like, he was a really good yeah. defensive center and good attacking. He, he started the twenty twenty season at the West Tigers. Yeah, got swapped for Harry Grant. Won two comps <laughs> on the trot. Oh. He's a good, he's a good player, man. So I wonder I, when you, you see someone's defense like you know struggle like that. Usually they need a re- shoulder reconstruction or something. Like something's going wrong for them to be missing tackles like that. Um, but I, I want to see Polo because I, what I, Jackson Polo for me is interesting because it's a real going to be a really good example of like how good is this Rooster system. Now it's not going to say if he struggles, it's not going to say the Rooster system isn't good. But if he kills it, it's going to say wow, like. The Roosters have still got it. They still got it. They know how to take players with a, a ton of potential. You look at Polo's physicality, you look at how fast he is, how good he was in the year that the, the Rabbitohs went to grand final, and you go, mate, he should be a first grader. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what direction they go there. Do you think Billy Smith plays this, or is I, he still out? I'm not sure injury-wise where Billy Smith's at. So okay. if he's fit, I think he will certainly play in the first mm. one. But I'm not sure. It's, it's it's hard to keep up with Billy Smith's injuries, unfortunately. And the other position I'm going to be watching this week is their front row. Mm. Lost Toki Aho, lost Isaac Liu. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, Liu went to the Titans the year before? Year before, yeah. So they um, lost Toki Aho. Lost Toki Aho. Hargreaves seems to be towards the end of his career. Mm. And so I'm really interested to see the front row, who is going to be... I'd, I'd assume they're going to put Lodges as the next Hargreaves, but then who's going to be Lodges' position? That's something that I'm interested to see. Uh, Billy Smith scheduled, according to Fox Sports, to return <coughs> mid-season. Mid-season? Oh, wow. Fuck, God. poor bloke. Fuck me. Um, okay. Uh, Raiders versus Bulldogs. Timmy, what do you want to see from the Raiders, man? Uh, another team that's quite locked in, uh, relatively locked in the one to 13 it'll be that ball playing sorry i don't think it'll be that ball playing lock on what we're hearing out of the capital is that emray gula or corey horsburgh uh, will be the 13 to start the season so close watch on of course trey mooney and adam mariotti who are sort of fighting for that final bench spot by the sounds of things we've been speaking a lot about trey mooney on this podcast uh, ever since he started for new south wales 19 to last season so what sort of role they play for for the raiders on field will be interesting, but it if they're going with one of those big boys at thirteen, it's obviously just going to be a knock 'em down style of belt them through the middle uh, style of footy for the Raiders once again, which to be fair we've seen in recent years. Yeah. Um, so cut the watch on the, on the young boys there, Harley Smith Shields, who yeah. was terrific two seasons ago, yeah. I believe it was uh, ACL last year. Apparently he's like. Really big wraps on him. We saw how good he was for the Raiders in limited opportunity. So I, I don't suspect that he'll start round one because, again, their back five pretty well picks itself. But he's one that's just going to be knocking the door down for a start at some stage this season. And I suspect probably pretty early on. Mm. I saw some him in content some other, the other day. He might have got better looking. <laughs> so hot. Such a joke. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think Tim's probably covered most of that. I'm really excited about Trey Mooney, obviously. He's one that I'm very keen to watch. But, uh, yeah, I I really like the Raiders squad. I think it's a really good I really, squad. really like the Raiders squad. Another year together, Fogarty, Whiten, Savage second year. Uh, what I'll be looking for the Raiders, uh, it's going to sound a bit silly, but they're front row because Papali'i, what do you reckon he's towards the end of his career? Maybe got three or four, two, three years left in him? Two. Maybe yeah. two. And so, uh, obviously, Tarpanair becomes the main guy once, um, you know, Papa Lee leaves. 30 years old, sorry. I assumed he was older. Fuck, it feels like he's been around forever. Oh, he has been. And that's why it's like two, three, I reckon. Yeah, maybe three, actually. He, mate, yeah. he, he has played so much rugby league in his career in <laughs> yeah. the front row. Like, fuck, mate. Like, So, I'm really interested to see... The, the thing is, is sometimes when you have this, like, super, like, hyper-competitive forward pack with the Raiders where it's like impossible to get into it, you can actually lose a lot of your depth to other clubs because it's like fuck man like the bench at this club would be starting at a lot of the clubs and so i want to see the depth that the raiders wear have they managed to keep the next big things in the middle when in reality the chances of them getting a start like papaliti who was their oldest front rower is still only 30. tarpane is about 28 um horsebra 23 24 um huddle i'd say he's about 27 um, this is not an aging forward pack by any stretch. And so if you're a young forward hitting 19 years old, you're sitting there going, 
Then you've got Hudson Young, who's relatively... You know what I mean? Like, it's a fucking tough forward pack to get into. So that's what I'm interested in seeing. The other one that I think is interesting, I don't know if you've heard anything about him, Tim, but this uh, Pasami Solo, who's come down from Newcastle Knights. Like, same sort of body as Joe Tapano. Yeah. About 190 centimetres, 105 kegs or so. So uh, and I think it's interesting when you insert someone into this pack of just absolute monsters, mm. if they can go to that level. Yeah. So he's one I'll be keeping an eye on. What do you got there, Matty? Uh, just on Papa Lee, he's this is his 13th year of NRL and in 12 of them he's played 19 or more games Mate, he's been incredible he's one of the greatest front rowers Canberra have ever had and it's probably the only other person I would have in front of him maybe is Glenn, Glenn Lazarus I think there was a stat the other day random stat guy put up for his I think at the same mark in their careers after 50 games Papali had scored more tries than Dane Gagel yeah I saw that what a oh, great stat unbelievable to be, to be fair Papali did start on an edge yeah to be fair how crazy is it when you see those old Maroon tapes of him in the back row I, I almost forget it happens I know it's so fun. good because he's become like almost like an iconic front rower yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you know, big minute as well. Oh, like. big minutes and his footwork and the amount of match winnings he scored oh. where they need something to happen in finals games. And too, he'll just right. fucking that yeah. try he scored down in Canberra South against South. You just go oh. far out. Um, yeah, to me, he, he's probably one of the best front rowers of the last generation for sure. For sure. Because, like, when did he debut? When did he debut for Queensland? 2010, 11? Yeah, I was going to say 11. Say. And so, like, well, that's at least. You know, they lost in 14, but it's like at least five or six years of dominance that he had a big fucking hand in. Mm. Um, and, you know, and look at the guys that he was replacing, you know, like Petros, Webke was before him, you know, like Matt Scott. 2013. 2013. He's played 23 games for Queensland. Far out. God. And so, like, in the last few years, he would have won, like, what, four, four series? Four or five series? Fucking fair effort. Fair f in the middle? Holy shit. Um, he's been part of six winning. Like he's part of thirteen. He's part of fifteen. He's part of sixteen. He's part of seventeen. He's part of twenty. He's part of twenty twenty two. Wow, and six 20, series and the big ones, obviously twenty and twenty two. Yeah. yeah, series that they were not. They were big outsiders. Yeah. Like no Ken Smith, no Billy Slater, yeah. none of the, the greats anymore. Um, Even eighteen, like I know Teddy scored at the end, but. Ethan Lowe was the man for the Queensland that day, but Papali wasn't far behind. He was fantastic, and he well, scored right at the him, end. Too. Yeah, him and uh, Josh Maguire scored, scored. and brought, like brought momentum back. Uh, so yeah, really interested to see the next front rowers. And you know, we've spoken about him quite a bit. Trey Mooney, I r I'm really keen to see how this guy goes because, you know, yes, it is a hard forward pack to, to break into, but I watched him play in that. Uh, New South Wales, Queensland under 19s, he was um he was impressive. He's got an aura about him for a young There's guy. There's something yeah, yeah, he's just got that it factor about him. Again, it could that could all change in first grade. Um now, Bulldogs, what do we want to see at the Doggies Guru? Uh yeah, they're, they're an interesting side, Canterbury. I think they should improve this year. I'm just I think I just want to see the combinations of the spine. Realistically, like I, I, th I think Reed's going to be fantastic for Burton. I guess that that left edge is just going to be so interesting with Viliami kick out there, who plugs into left centre. Um, there's been a lot of talk this whole preseason about Alamotti and Skelton. I was very mm. high on both of them, but it sounds like Hayes Perham's going to play fullback. So you would assume Avrilo plays in the centres, and they probably go with Brayden Burton. Nah, so I'm here in Alamotti. Yeah, Alamotti and Avrilo at centre. Gun, beautiful. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. That, that's really good to hear then. So yeah. if Alamotti gets a shot, do you know if he's going to play left or right? Not sure. I hope he lands on that left side. That would be perfect for yep. him. Uh, Bulldogs are interesting because what you usually see in situations when a club's rebuilding is like they go top heavy. Obviously, they get their 17 and they're trying to fight their way back into the eight. But usually it takes a while to get those that depth sorted. So I, I'm really interested to see, like, what is their depth like? Like, what, what's the next generation like? Because it, it may take a, a year or two to catch up to the top. Because them going into the market right now, they can, they've managed to jagger Josh Adokar, then, then Gus Gould managed to jagger all these top guys. But Gus Gould only arrived at the club last year. So before that, when they're going out to young kids that are still in school, speaking to their parents, what's their bargaining tool? Like, and so we may actually see... You know, so the, they won the spoon two, two times in the last three or four years. Yeah. So we may see a little bit of a, a hangover from that, where in those two years when they were trying to get those fifteen or sixteen year olds, and 
you know, parents are going, well, the dogs, like, they, they're last. Like, they, they really are struggling. Their coaching, they, their coaching has changed, like, so many times. So I want to know, like, has, are we going to see the effect of the Bulldogs' depth in this, fir- especially this first trial? Um, that's what I'm, I'm keen I'm, to see. I'm hearing, can be that they're pretty good. And I think they're, um, you know, fairly confident about that, you know, the next gen dog is coming through. Even like Declan Casey was outstanding and limited, had that uh, pretty or, Barry Crocker. Yeah, Barry Crocker. One of the let's, worst. Let's call it what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the it worst. Was a Barry ever. Crocker debut <laughs> and bounced back and was terrific. Yeah, he yeah. said so much about his character as a footballer. Declan Casey there, Braden Burns may not even start. Alan Motti, Will Skelton, you just mentioned them, Guru. Uh, heaps of wraps on Jacob Preston, the former rooster, coming in. Apparently, he's been killing it in preseason, along with Andrew Davey, who Davey's not someone who, who would be on a lot of money there. I know Davey probably doesn't fit the, the youthful next gen mould as such, but in terms of depth in the side, uh, Jackson Topany, who's another one who hopefully this year gets his big crap at cr- crap. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big crap this year. See you, boys. That's <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good talent coming through. Preston's the one that you have to keep hearing his name pop up that I'm really looking forward to watching him play in the trials. Edge back rower. Mm. Uh, another guy I, I hope they play him, and he'll be probably the main guy I'm watching this week, is the front rower from Sharks. Pele. Pele. Yeah. He is a huge uh, – he's, he's almost the final piece of the puzzle. If him, Luke Thompson um, – you know, can can be the front row they need him to be, then all of a sudden they may challenge for the eight this year or next year. Uh, so I want to see how Pele goes. Um, I think for them too, the other watch is Hayes Perham, who is going to be playing in the All-Stars game, I believe. Yeah. So he's another one to okay. be watching that apparently he's going to play fullback. For so he, Hayes Perham was like at the Warriors for a bit, I think, and he Warriors, killed he's, it. He's very talented. He was yeah. at the Warriors, he went to Parramatta. Um, he's sort of been a fullback 5'8". He's got a bit of X factor to him. Mm. Um, obviously, a big test being an NRL fullback, but he's yeah. he's only twenty three years old. Um, no mention of where they're playing. Okay, the great Aquaman. Aquaman, we've already done it. I called it out two weeks ago. <laughs> Why are we doing a bloke tour to Maru at Aquaman <laughs> Oval, mate? Let's start this week. <laughs> um, okay, Cowboys versus Dolphins. What do we want to see from the Cowboys? Oh, I, I, another side sort of picks itself, doesn't it? Mm. But I, I also think like their, their depth is unbelievable. Me and Maddie went through and did their best seventeen the other day, and I think when we wrote down the seventeen, I think there was only five positions that we didn't have sort of a slash next to as mm. potential depth. So uh, I'm very keen because you have a look at their round one side how it might line up. Uh, Lalo, we're not sure if he's playing. Dunn's injured. There's a couple of other back rowers that are out at the moment. I'm interested to see if they play. That Sadrugu, who you remember was the lock forward for Fiji in the yep. World Cup, he yep. was very good. So I reckon he might be an interesting little watch for round one. Mm. Cowboys, what do you reckon, Timmy? Not looking at a lot, to be honest, just for that reason. They're just such a settled, well balanced lineup. I don't think a lot changes. The one will be that left edge back row spot. Uh, who gets that nod? A bit of chat coming out that Cohen Hess might make move back to the edge and play there. So he'd want to be fit and moving about all right if he does. But yeah, there's. Aside from that left edge back row, it's nothing really strikes me as being too too <coughs> close to watch. There's one other kid to watch that I believe there's a chance he might be the 14. His name's Tom Chester. He mm. played last year one or two games. Mm. Can sort of play fullback, halves, could jump in at nine. Very, very talented young kid. They've got a lot of wraps on. So I, I reckon he'll start in this game this weekend. Yeah, so for me, it's I want to see their energy because they had such a massive year last year and – the thing is, is sometimes when you have these crazy pre-seasons, they're really good for one season. But if you go and do another crazy pre-season, now, look, some clubs seem to be able to manage it really well. We look at the Storm, um, you know, re- renowned for their pre-seasons. So I just, I wonder, what I want to see from the Cowboys is, is do their standards stay the same? Are they just as enthusiastic, just, ener- just as energetic? Are they not going to rest on their laws and go, well, you know, we're a premiership threat now, we're all good. Are they still going to be that hungry, determined underdog from from position one in the top 30 all the way down to posi- uh, position 30? Uh, that That is what's going to be really interesting for me and the Cowboys is, do they have that same zest, energy, underdog, mongrel uh, mentality that they had last year? Uh, Dolphins, we've already spoken about with the trial last week, but, you know, obviously it's, it's really their spine that we're looking at um, to see how well they kind of gel, I guess. What do you reckon they'll do? Do you reckon they'll play their best 17 for just one game or do they need to play it for two? 
I'd what probably play it for two. Yeah. I, I'd, what I'd do is I'd probably try to have like your, essentially your best 17, play them for like 20 minutes and then just take out the big dogs. I'd be trying to play them as much as possible together. Like I think they've got to. They, just they, got they, to. they need that time on part together. And, yep. you know, at, at a minimum 40 minutes of mm. both trials, their best 17, as close to it as they can yep. get. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Broncos v the Titans. What do we want to see from the Broncos? Uh, it's the standards, really. I just it's like we know they got the talent. We all know that they've got a really good, talented roster. But I just want to see this week specifically is to carry over the standards they had for Wyndham for at least sixty minutes, where there was high completion rate. I think they only gave away like maybe one or two penalties. I want to see that again this week. Where are they a disciplined side? that is bought into the direction of the club, or are they a bunch of young, talented superstars that aren't going in the same direction? Uh, I also, obviously the nine position for me is probably the most crucial right now for them to get it right. I think um, it's gonna be really interesting to see who gets named, but then also who gets named on the bench. Uh, what do you wanna see from the Broncos, Guru? I think you've nailed it, to be honest mm. with you, mate. Obviously, standards has been a big thing for a couple of years, uh, but it's the nine spot for me that I'll be so interested in. I reckon there'll be three nines named in this squad, mm. maybe even four, realistically. Uh, they legitimately could be four. Uh, so, yeah, the nine spot's a big watch for me. We've seen Smoothie. He's done everything he could possibly do so far. Yeah. So now over to the others now. Mm. Timmy? I think uh, I want to see how long it takes Reese Walsh to slot in alongside Ezra Mam and Adam Reynolds. Uh, I think Reese Walsh is going to kill it this season, uh, but you know, realistically, it might take five, ten rounds for that to happen as these combinations come together. Um, so I just want to see a bit of cohesion behind them early on to suggest you know that we might see it sooner than sooner rather than later. Yep. Uh, and for the Titans, what do we want to see? What do you want to see for the Titans, Guru? I think just how defense. Heart, yeah, defense is obviously a big thing, but just I, I want to see where they're all placed on the field. I mm. want to see what edge Tanner Boyd's playing on, where Fafita's playing. Um, I'm look, I'm really keen to see Sammy Verrills run out for this side. Yeah, I think that all the talk's been about Foz, which so it should, but I think Verrills is such a good footballer. Mm. I, I agree. It's really interesting to see. And they've been missing like a genuine nine for so many years now, but my main look... I don't care, you know, who is out there, whether it's the best of the best of their squad or the the, the reserves or depth, defence. Mm. That's all that matters for me with the Titans. I don't give a shit about anything else. What is their defence like? Timmy, what do you reckon? Yeah, if it's a nil all draw and you don't look like putting a point on the board, who cares? Who They'll gives come. a shit? We know you can attack just a bit of def- defensive resilience from them this season and it all starts in the trial game. So mm. just good defensive structures look like everyone's on the same page together. There are a few new faces there, so... It might tie, take a bit of time to get these even, like we speak about attacking combinations, but defensive combinations are just as important. So uh, to see them them got coming together well. I think as well, interesting to see how they use Jaden Campbell. Mm. I mean, like, you, you know he can play fullback. If you're not going to use him as a fullback this year, if you're going to put him on, you know, it's, it's in the middle or wherever they're going to use him, surely you start to use him in the trials and get him used to playing that role. Yeah, yeah. Lock him into that role and be like, mate, this yeah. is your role now. Get used to getting your body in, in front of big bodies or, or whatever, or maybe like, Brimo defends in the line, I don't know. But like, even if, if this week, if they name nowhere near a full-strength side, if Jaden Campbell's going to be playing through the middle, like you almost just name him at 13 just to see how he goes. Yeah. There's no point naming him at fullback. You, you know he can do it. Yeah. You, you might as well give him Or even shot. like name him on the bench, get him used to like just coming just into games. just bring him in through yeah. the middle, yeah. Um, now, if you're in the eastern suburb, uh, sorry, if you're in eastern Sydney, head to Porter's Liquor in Maroubra. They're selling bloke. But the store itself has been recently renovated, so it looks awesome. So that's Porter's Liquor in Maroubra. Uh, head in, grab some bloke and a bar of beer, um, and their new store. It's bloody awesome. Just recently renovated. Grab a case of bloke beer. That is Porter's Liquor in Maroubra. Now it's time for everyone's favourite segment. The uh, grand final teams from uh, two different years. We play them each- against each other. So this year, this sorry, this year, this week we are going 2008 Manly, 40 nil win record. Is that a record? That's a, the biggest margin in the grand final. So, yep. 2008 Manly versus 2017 Storm. A lot of people argue that Storm side is <laughs> right up there with the best ever. And ironically, in 2008, that's when they beat the Storm in that grand final, 42 nil. So let's just off the bat. 2008 Manly versus 2017 Storm. Who wins, Guru? Yeah, it's a tough one. I always look at this 2008 Manly side and think they were the turning point from when rugby looked like. They were the last 
old school sort of footy side. I know, like we've heard, we've heard a lot of people say it before, but I genuinely th- think that they were. They would go out and get on the piss after games. That they were very like a nineteen eighties mm. sort of footy side. And then it was funny they were versing Melbourne Storm, who would change professional the professionalism of rugby league forever, realistically. But mate, I'm one of those people that sits two thousand seventeen Melbourne Storm with your nineties Raiders, your nineties Broncos. I think it's one of the. I think I think because they won their grand final so easily. People forget how fucking good this team was. Mm. Timmy, who you got winning? Yeah, it, it's a great one just because of the dominance of mainly that that year. So you look at the storm of 2017 and probably on face value you go, the, I'd side with them and it's so star-studded. I just think with the storm in 2017, it, it was at the point where Slater, Cronk, Smith... Like a fine wine, they just aged so well. And there was no regression at the back end of their, their career, which was just remarkable. They just had rugby league as a sport worked out by that point. Mm. So they, had, they all had the freakish ability, but they just knew the game inside out. Whatever position they found themselves in a game of football, if they were behind, if it was tight, whatever it was, they knew a way out of it. And they did it for time and time again. So as good as Manly were that season, particularly the grand final, um, it was. It's got to be Melbourne twenty seventeen for me. Yeah, I made on the same. Like as good as Manly were, any team that has Cam Smith, Cooper Cronk, and Billy Slater in it, I think they get the job done. Remember um, how we spoke about the spines last week, and we said, "What's a ten out of ten spine?" You're looking at it. So the, Slater, the, yeah. Munster, <laughs> yeah. Cronk, Smith, and your lock is Dalphin Yep. Yep. Um, so just, just you know, your Smith, your Munster. Your Slater, your Cronk. It's just super, super hard to beat. So I'm going to pick the Storm. What are you, Maddie? Yeah, that 17 Storm. As far, I've been watching footy since what, to the early 2000s. It's probably, in fact, it would be my number one team of, of a season. It's interesting. Looking at this 2008 uh, grand final lineup, though, the Manly and the 08 Storm side, two of the best centres we've ever, ever seen, Jamie Lyon and Greg Inglis, were the sixes <laughs> in the game. Yeah, it's wow. quite interesting. But yeah, wow. I've got um, I've got seventeen Melbourne, but fuck that, that manly 08 to eleven or even 08 to thirteen team was just unbelievable. All right, boys, now it's time. Fullback, Billy Slater or Brett Stewart. Have to go with the kid, Billy. Slater, Billy, Billy, Billy. Slater. But back in back in those 08 days, that was the real the real battle. But yeah, you, you like uh, the th- th- crazy thing is, is career wise, it's an obvious answer of Slater. Both of them. Like at their best, the the, the margin so was good. not as big as people think. Not as big as I mean the snake, especially that season in particular. The Prince of fucking manly. The season that Brett Stewart and Matt Orford had their combination was unbelievable. That mm. season, Brett Stewart top try scorer. Yeah. That season with twenty two, which you know he pipped a, he stats. pipped a young Broncos winger by a try. <laughs> <laughs> oh. there you go. They one try, got motherfucker. You and I had, and I was, I was like leading try scorer for most of the year, and just they run into the finals, just fucking. You lost to a fullback, mate. That's embarrassing. Oh wow. Wingers. As I said, that combination: Stewart got top try scorer, Orford won the Dali M. Mm. Mm. Pretty special. Fucking oath. Uh, wingers, you got Vunavalu, the Fox, versus Mickey Robinson. And the Wolfman Williams. I think I'll have to go the Fox and Vunavalu. Yeah, for sure. I think it has to be those two. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you there, the Melbourne boys. Okay, centres. We've got Will Chambers, Curtis Scott versus Stephen Bell and Steve Maddai. I'm going Will Chambers and Steve Maddai, which is a fucking formidable combination. Uh, Yeah, I would go those two, but there's a 5'8 that I probably can't pick in my team that I would play at centre. We'll talk about okay. it. Okay. Yeah, there's. Oh, I was going to say there's two. Yeah, there's two you'd put. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Sorry. Carry so, yep. yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I'm with Matt Eye and Will St. I've got 40. I'll tell you what's throwing me out. I've got, the, over there. I've got the. I've got the 08 grand final up in front of me. And like, I've got the Melbourne Storm team from that game as well. And it just. Played yeah, okay. Rattled you. Yeah, rattled I made that rattled. mistake last week. But yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. The Sixers, Jamie Lyon or Cam Munster? I'm taking Munster at six and I'm 
uh, apologising to a centre who's just been cut 10 seconds later because I need Jamie Lyon in my team somewhere. Timmy? I'm the same. At, at 5'8", I've got to go Cameron Munster. Do I think, like, Jamie Lyon's one of the best centres we've ever seen, but he was playing... I mean, he's playing out of position, but he won a grand final 40 nil. I'm. I've, How know, many comps I, did Jamie Lyon win? Two? Two. 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 And then he also went over to the Super League for a fair. He went at a weird time. He went a lot earlier. He went to the UK Super League when he was at the top of his game, mm. which it happened a little bit more back then, but a, very, a rarity because he, uh, he had his reasons, obviously. But yeah, it's a tough one. And he was in about, he was in two, I think. Two or three losing grand finals as well. Yeah, he lost one for Parramatta and yeah. one. Then he would have lost a what, couple, seven. couple for Manly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. In terms of best Five defensive centres of the NRL era, is he number one? Him and Matty Cooper, maybe? Yeah, I'd have him up there with Matt Cooper. <coughs> probably, probably number one for me. As far as lot like attacking centres, though, like he was incredible. Mm. He had the oh. best kicking game we've ever seen from a centre, mm. I think. Uh, he, he was he was playing centre, but he was realistically playing 5'8". Okay, yeah, I, I have to go Munster, but Jamie Lyon. Okay, here's a question then. Who does Jamie Lyon replace, Steve Maddow or Chambers in the centres? For me personally, he replaces Steve Maddow. Yeah, probably Maddow, but it's close. I could go either way. Steve Maddow, imagine, yeah, Will Chambers. I mean, no knock on Steve Maddow. He's one of the best hitting centres we've ever seen, but a defensive duo of Will Chambers at his best and and Lyon. Good luck getting through that. Who are you? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Will Chambers defensively as well. Like, there's, you're not getting through on either side. Okay. Okay, now seven, which actually, you know, now it's all said and done. I think, you know, we're all going to go cronk over Orford. But I think during this period... Orford would have, during for quite a while, Orford would have kept Cronk out of a Aussie side or whatever side. So I don't actually think it's, I don't think Cronk is that much better than Orford. Matter of fact, I'd even argue on their day, he's not that much better than Orford. But career-wise, obviously... Well, Orford won the Dally M this year, mm. in our way. Yeah. So, so you're going Cronk or Orford? I'm going Cronk. I think that Orford in this season, he's absolute best the peak and highlights and everything you put him in the same conversation as Cronk but just overall career and what you're going to get game in game out Cronk by a stretch for me mm. just quickly on Matty Orford when he went over to the Super League one man of steel there he 22 tries 42 goals I think oh, that up. was in the same season 05 it might have been such a gun uh, I'm I'm on Cronk yep. quite like quite happy to lock in Cronk there just the ultimate game manager Matty Orford uh, that season he won the Daly M medal for, I know this is very harsh But from memory There was a bit of conjecture around it Was it not? Was he like Was there a lot of debate around Should he have won it that no, year? No that, that was the Clive Churchill It was the Churchill When Brent Kite won it Yeah okay Oh there, 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 there might have been but I, I think, think, the Kite I think there might have been a, sure. An audience that was looking for The beak to win a Daly M <laughs> that, that may be What you're t- referring to Robbery to was the word uh, Yeah Now that it comes to mind <laughs> Um Okay, and I'm assuming you go Cronk. I go Cronk. It's just interesting how Cronk was behind Orford at yeah. Melbourne in the in the. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he, like the career has ended, and Cronk did what he did, but the distance is nowhere near yeah. as. You know, everyone knows Cronk's name, whereas like the next generation may not know Orford as well. Just on what Tim said there, the 2008 Dalian Medal went to Matt Orford. He had 24 points. So as far as Dalian go, that is a pretty small amount of point. Second and third were tied for 22 points. Billy Smith and Cameron Smith. Uh, Billy, Billy Slater Smith. and Cameron Smith. No way. So they took points off each other. Like one of them should have won it, yeah. arguably. Yeah. 24 would be pretty low total as well for mm. a, well, a Dally M winner. Yeah. Um, when you think that Teddy came third this year with 34. <laughs> God. I wonder whether the game is just getting so more focused in on the superstar Maybe. rather than the team. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, now, number eight. So the two front rowers, Brett Kite, Brent Kite, apologies, Josh Perry versus Jesse Bromwich and Jordan McLean. Oh, this is tough, man. Shit. Shit. Guru, what are you going? I think Jesse's got to be one of them. And then my other one, I'd probably lean towards Brent Kite, I think. Oh, McLean missing out's tough. I'm going. I'm going Jesse Bromwich 
and Brent Kite. But only like the, the lucky thing is, is we're not swapping eight for eight. If you had to swap eight for eight, which one are you going? Jesse Romich or Brent Kite? Jesse. Oh. Timmy, who's your front row? Uh, I've got Kite and Bromwich. Pretty happy with that as well. If you, if you have to choose between Kite and Bromwich, who are you choosing? Brent Kite. He really? Was so, he was so destructive. He was, Brent a, Kite. was a big was body. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you guys. I'm definitely going Bromwich, but I'm going Josh Perry. I Ooh. think he he was like just he, he was that up and coming front row at Newcastle when they won in those early 2000s, and then he was a premier front row for Manly in those years as well. I know he he went to Super League before that uh, 11 Grand Final, but yeah, he was a beast for me, Josh Perry. Okay, uh, now back row: Anthony Watmau, Len Hall, versus Kafusi. Tohu Harris. You're not even giving the great ba- uh, uh, Matt Ballon a go. Against Smithy. Oh, sorry, didn't you? <laughs> Knockout W. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that was an honest mistake. That was a from Broncos yeah. assistant coach. Uh, wow. That was an honest mistake. That was an honest mistake. Who are you going for nine? Cam Smith or Matty Ballon? Oh, mate, I, I feel very sorry for Matt Ballon because this is this kind of sums up his career as far yeah, as rep football bloke. and everything goes. He just happened to come along as the greatest ever in his position, potentially. Greatest ever player. Got to go Cam Smith, but fuck, Matt Ballon was a good footballer. Fucking oath he was. If Cam Smith doesn't exist, Matt Ballon, Matt, Matt Ballon probably plays 15 Origins yeah. and wins five or six series. Who you got? I'll shake it up and go Ballon. <laughs> <laughs> give, him, give him the love that he never got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Smith, obviously. Oh, how good. Yeah, obviously, Smithy. Um, okay, yeah, the back row. We've got Anthony Watmau, Glenn Hall versus Felice Kafusi Toe Harris. This is a oh. tough one. Fuck. Oh. What do you reckon, Tim? <laughs> uh, Chock Watmau's first pick there. I'm very happy with it. And then I think second is Tider. Uh, I just, Fuck. yeah, I, I think across the across the career, Felice Kafusi has just been such a star. I, I'd feel so harsh leaving Kafusi out. Yeah, again, one of the best defensive edge back rows we've ever seen. Anthony Watmo is one of the best attacking back rows I've ever seen. So, Watmo and Kafusi. All right, we're going to speed this up because I bloody got to get out of here. Got a meeting. Um, I'm going to go Kafusi and Watmo. Yeah, what mo? Confusing. Nah, I'm going to Harris and what mo? Wow. Thank God okay. Beaver was on the bench. That would have been a real headache. <laughs> um, now, at 13, Glenn Stewart, Dale Finucane. Gifty. <gasps> Gifty. Yep, Stewart. That's tough, man. That's super tough. Oh. Tough? It's got to be Gifty. Well, Dale be Finucane, gifty. He, he won what? Three comps? Two comps? All right, Glenn Stewart. <laughs> Glenn Stewart. <laughs> Okay, uh, on the bench, the both utilities were, I'd assume Tim Glasky. Glasby was a utility, not really. No, Kenny no, Bromwich. Kenny Bromwich. Slade Griffin was. More Slade, 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 Slade Griffin Griffin was? Okay, Slade Griffin versus Heath Lestrange. Who are we going? Uh, I'd go Slade Griffin. I think. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I'll go Heath Lestrange. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd fuck. I don't know Heath Lestrange. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are you going? Yeah, Heath. He was tough. Yeah. Okay, uh, now, 15, which I'm assuming was a back row. Mark Bryan or uh, Kenny Bromwich? Uh, Kenny Bromwich. Kenny Bromwich. Kenny and the canter. Yeah, I can't tell you much about Bryan. Kenny Bromwich. Um, Jason King, Nelson Asofasola. Uh, Jason King, Tim Glasby. Oh. I'll probably go Jason King, to be honest with yeah. you. I'm yeah, I'm glad you changed yeah, King. Uh, oh, sorry, Nelson and Glasby there. So, yeah, Jason King for sure. Yeah, me guy. too. Steve Menzies or Nelson Solomona? Beaver. <laughs> Nelson's getting on my bench, like, somehow, oh, yeah. but he's not beating, he's yeah, not beating the Menzies. Beaver. Yeah, the Beaver. Yeah, Beaver. Great, yep. All right, that's done and dusted. Let us know in the comments section uh, what your selections would be. Uh, guys, country tour, first month of the NRL, powered by Ringers Western. We are going to... Armadale, we're going to Rockhampton, we're going to Cairns and Wagga. So we may add more uh, more dates and, and more locations, but there we're going, country tour, bloke powered by Ringers Western. Make sure to grab a case of bloke in a bar, but yeah, 
by grabbing a case of bloke and a bar beer, this is how we get to do these things, guys. By You support the platform by grabbing some beer and we get to put things on like this without ma- charging you tickets, all that kind of stuff. You get down, have a great time, really enjoy. It's going to be a ripping time, uh, the bloke country tour. Got anything going on, boys? Yeah, beers and break-evens, Wednesday, 3 p.m. If you're a Supercoach player, we'll be announcing our code to enter our beers and break-evens comp. So, big episode there. And, Boom. Uh, SC Playbook YouTube. Give us a, a follow. Give us a what follow. Do you, what do you do? Subscribe on YouTube? Yeah, subscribe. You're subscribe. Sorry. Subscribe yeah. to SC Playbook on YouTube. Subscribe. Uh, as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. Thank you. <laughs>